two teams in quite some time. The Stur ESP Sunday, September 8th. Will Bats lead his Cowboys to the field as first ever head coach. He has had success wherever he's been as an offensive coordinator. We mentioned in the open, South Florida and Texas, his most recent stops. Stan, you were a coach on the football field at one time in your life. What about the nerves of Sterling Gilbert? What's going through his mind right now? Well, it's not only going all week long because he's trying to prepare himself not only like he's on the side of the ball, and he's trying to prepare himself for timeouts on the defensive side of the ball. He's trying to prepare himself in the kicking game. There's a lot of other things that go on on that sideline that the head coach has to take care of. We talked to him earlier this week, and I said, what was the biggest surprise now that had everyone on the piece of my time? But he'll feel familiar on sideline. Get a tree for some. What else to hear tonight? More than people. Are here. They're loud and proud. A record crowd is expected tonight. Over 20,000 is what they're thinking. They've only seen that three times in the history of this stadium. The last time, 2002, when Grambling came to town, they pulled 20,300. But 17,610. I asked them, how do you all plan it? They said, well, we have plenty of room on the grass. So get excited because it's going to be a lively one here tonight in Lake Charles. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Carly, thanks so much. We'll come down to you numerous times, of course, throughout our telecast tonight. There's already a number of fans, in fact, on the berm on the United Stadium, and uh, plenty more expected to come in at this game. There's a jukebox. <laughs> the Southern Band, they're going to entertain us at halftime. It's going to be a very entertaining game here tonight. Two teams, the Jaguars, definitely with the experience advantage against the Cowboy team, Sterling Gilbert, and his new offense. Yeah, there's all the unexpected, all the experience on the side of Southern, but it's nothing like going through that whole summer to finally get to that first Saturday to kick off the season in football. And they're sitting in Louisiana. It's going to be the biggest crowd probably they've ever had. How much, though, does experience play a part? Southern with 16 returning starters back. Well, the experience is great. It's on the side of this game. It's on. You know, this is on from Texas and everywhere else. We're making us live. And then all of a sudden, you make those adjustments. And the experience. You know, very confident. We talked to him earlier this week. It's his eighth season as hit cards. Southern won the Slack West Division last year. At Horn State. He expects Southern to be in the championship game again. If uh, McNeese will be receiving the opening. Get your set. It's up. Here on CSP and uh, Jacoby Skinner. Warrior number 34 leading the Gowish of the field. These are brought. 35 is underway here at Charles. Good blocks up field bit third. And a player down for Southern. And that is Rob. You just hold the kick off to you. His lucky kicker to come in. Plus my yard. Well, that hurt you. He is their starting punter and their backup kicker. With them better than it looks like right now as Baraha, who you see the knee as he tried to bring Skinner down. Yeah, I mean, he tried to make the tackle, but uh, Skinner made a move on his leg out. Almost like leg whipping to kick him to bring him down and the ball backwards is not supposed to bend that way. And quite a bit of pain here from Katie, Florida. A Southern defense that is awfully good and, and much like McNeese the last few years, the defense has been the staple of Dawson Odom's Jaguars, a team that just gave up 25 points a game last season. A new offense in McNeese coming up. If you're a defense, they've watched film Southern has of Gerald Gibbert, South Florida last season where he had a lot of success as we see Baraha fortunately be able to come off the field under his own power and let's hope we can see him later tonight. I'll ask you in a minute just how can you be able to this McNeese offense when you haven't really seen them yet. So on a yard quarterback, Justin Pratt, senior from Spring, Texas, the leading return rusher by 320 yards on the ground last season. Left guard Grant Bergillis, senior from Mandeville, preseason first team all Southland Conference. So let's see what Southern does look McNeese offense. We'll see a lot of that. A hard hit just shy of the 30-yard pass to one of the two transfers in the receiving core for McNeese and Davion Curtis. And hurry get back to the line. They want to go as fast as they can go. But as a coach, you want to get that first completion to that quarterback something quick, make him feel good. Benjamin Harris with a big hit. A stack look at the bottom of his oh. Orgeron able to recover, but behind the 20. Trying to fake it to that running back, and he put it on the hip, and the hip actually knocked it out of his hand for a huge loss. Lucky to, for uh, Cody to get that ball back. We talked about the nerves of Sterling Gilbert. Perhaps some nerves from... He was a six-string walk-on when he arrived on campus, and he was lucky to recover. First down marker at the 39. Our first drive of the game. 
as we begin the 2019 season. Swinging it out. This is Pratt. A little bit of room for a special teams unit, but because of the fumble, Southern is going to Just a safe uh, screen call there just to get out of that third and long the football. There are plenty with the wind are back, uh, trying to pin uh, Southern back. But just uh, that turnover there, almost a turnover, putting that ball in there, knocking it out of his hand, really slowed him down. And Coach uh, Sterling there, he was really upset with the officials after the first play that he didn't spot the ball fast enough. He wants to go fast. Bailey Rayborn will... Handle the punny deep, the younger brother of Gunnar Rayborn, all-conference kicker here at McNeese. It's recently last year. Not a good first look. It'll all depend on the mark, but Southern's going to have good starting field position on their first drive of 2019. They will have it right at the 50-yard line. It's first down, Southern. A seat number three in the HBCU preseason poll. Nine returning, including quarterback Ladarius Skelton, who started the last six games of 2018 for the Jaguars. They went 5-1. and one. They're only lost to Alcorn State in the SWAC title game. They're big up front. Southern are really big up front on the offensive line, trying to be physical, trying to run the football with Skelton also. Taking the jet weep, and Skelton awfully good with his legs. Crunched down to the turf, but now before a gain of about five. It's a 45 yard line. It's a gain of five. Second five coming up. Jonte Jones, the nose guard, providing the big hit, senior from Vashery. A lot of motion. Speed sweep with Sultan uh, on the run up in the middle of game five. On Reed, in the pitch to Jamar Washington, a first down. Could have chased him out. Really nice to do. If the inside zone, then attacked the defensive end for the pitch on the option. Both side coming around and uh, made a nice pitch there to uh, to Washington to get a first down. Ball of the Cowboy 37. Skelton Jr. from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Played in your college ball at full one of Juco shuttle title. His first throw to Zombie. Looking for Hunter Register. Minnesota transfer and quite done. Little play action. You get in that red zone inside the 40-yard line. You learn a little play action and trying to go deep. Nice job there by Dunn for Magnese to stay deep. Almost coming up with the interception. Dunn a couple of interceptions last season. It's a good pair of corners on this Magnese defense. Colby Burton the other. Preseason first team all-conference. Skelton tested Dunn. Dunn won the battle. Good gain on the ground on second down. That's Devon Ben Jr. from New Orleans, second team preseason all swag. Tell you something you don't see a lot of when it's into the boundary and actually ran into the boundary and just overloaded. They come with seven there. Crowd gets the life. Cowboy fans wanting a stop on third. Blitz. Catch made first down. T.J. Bedford in zone. Text speed transfer. Sophomore from Covington. Just a quick pass. Cornerbacks playing too far off. Just get that quick hit. Get the first down. Move the chain. Bedford and Register. Two FBS transfers on the Southern squad. Hard count. Flag down. Maybe a free play. To the end zone and tip wake up the test on the intended. It looks to be offsides on the Cowboys. I think they uh, felt like the center felt like there for uh, Southern felt like that they drew him offside, so he snapped the ball. I'm not sure everybody was ready, but he took the penalty. Uh, take a shot in the end zone there, but Skelton just didn't come up with the play. Offsides, Cowboys. Mean, first and five. First and five coming up. Christian Watson, our referee. I think you can see a little bit of this first drive. You can see the experience of Southern's offense and the inexperience of McNeese playing a different scheme or different coaches putting in their new scheme on defense. You can see the experience right now on Southern just kind of coming out. There's the starters for Southern. I mentioned Ben, Jeremiah Houston, their big tight end on the option. Right around the five, that is Washington, his second carry to the edge. 
again, Southern's seen something through this uh, defensive staff scheme that they're uh, faking that inside zone read, attacking that in, and then pitching on the option with the re uh, receiver coming on in motion. And uh, they're actually getting it. They're making them take the inside zone, pitch it in, and they're outside one-on-one -on -one with the quick, speedy receiver in Washington. Tough defense, especially the way Skelton can run with the football. First and goal. Ben trying to cut outside. Flag down. Ben no hold. This will push the ball back to hard. The experience of the Southern Swamp has six and three for players entering the fourth or fifth year at Southern. No says that's for level around his team, and you mentioned it already, Stan. How it doesn't look like this is their first drive of the season, even with the FBS transfers. Still the holding call puts it back to the 15, and Ben is knocked down. A fly down as well. Yeah, this is going to be illegal. Man. Guys in the line of scrimmage, you can tell when they lined up. Um, so they buy. There was one bugaboo for Southern last year. It was penalties, 80 rebounds. And on this drive from first and goal at the five, 15 yards in penalties off the last two snaps. One of two swag teams that McNeese will face on the sideline. His first game as head coach, Alcorn State, who's favored to win the East Division of the SWAC, will be here in a couple of weeks. In between, the Cowboys will go up to Stillwater, Hokes versus Black and Oklahoma State. They're waving the flag off. Uh, I guess they came and asked the official bottom team with both receivers on the line because both at the top were off. So, so the play stands, no gain, and so second and goal now from the 15. Sterling Gilbert will call the offensive plays. His defensive coordinator is Jim Gush with 36 years of coaching experience, many on the FBS level. Register, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Nice grab, Washington. Three Cowboys there. Third and goal coming. Nice play action up inside. Just hitting the flat route uh, outside to Washington to get inside the 10. Now you're third down. You got a shot to get the ball in the end zone here on third down. Colby Richardson, sophomore from New Orleans, I believe, was the one to lane the line. Third and goal, Southern, on their first drive. Ball just shy. Skelton, pressured, he slipped down sack. Cowboys get him at the 15. The second there for Magnese to stay with the receivers that were in the end. I don't know Skelton to scramble around, couldn't find anybody, a great job on the sack. Cordell Williams came on the blitz. Might have been Carlos Scott, junior from Houston. Was able to get Skelton down. So Ardell, sophomore from Zachary, onto it to the field goal. This is a 32-yarder. And was not known as long from 42. This one is pushed to the right. No good. No good. Great job there by McNeese defense to hold him to a field goal and uh, kicking into that win, missing it to the right. So after McNeese goes three and out, the defense holds. And we remain scoreless with 9 9 go in the first. Yeah, great job by the defensive line, really swarming there to uh, Skelton. For sure on the McNeese offense for the second time when we return. I fight on ESPNplus.com slash PPV. The U.S. Stan Humphreys, Carly McCord, Cody Orgeron and company. Their second drive to come. They went three and out on drive number one. Sterling Gilbert, new head coach at McNeese. Last five years as an offensive coordinator on the FBS level. Dallas team averaged 34 points a game. As long as the out of carry up the middle of Pratt. A gain of about three. Already trying to hurry and get back to the line. He's wanting the ball spotted even faster by the officials to get it going. This could be a big key tonight, of which he gets up to speed in the, in the heat and everything tonight. It is a moment. And we're during the low 90s. We get underway. Pratt trying to take it to the outside. He's fine. Put down for a loss back to the original line of scrimmage. Jacoby Papillon, the junior from here in Lake Charles with a stop. So nice job of just let's go wider and wider and wider, and then all of a sudden he couldn't get around the corner to make a play. Jenna horse collar call here, just got the jersey, pulled him down from behind. Right on the shoulder. Third and ten. 
Archeron going deep, has a man just out of his reach, incomplete. Trevor Beggy the chief from Lafayette, has stepped in his fender, but the pass just too low. His fingertips, but he got the feet tangled up right at the end. You can see him just they're right on fingertips, took a shot there. Uh, I think they're going to take at least one or two shorter tonight, trying to put the ball in the air going deep. And we were told before the game that the two corners listed as starters for Southern heading into today would not start. And so Oprah from Ocala, Florida was the man in coverage and was test. Rayborn on for a second punt. Go under the yards. This one is better. Short. And no flag down as the ball is picked up by the Cowboys. At the Should be a muff. Should be a muff on that punt. But what a great job of coverage. Short kick. Probably should have. Callum Foster with the recovery. Dawson Odoms, Southern's head coach, understandably onto the field, wanting an explanation. And our crew is going to talk about it as well. Stenhouse ready for a flag down. Done. There was Foster with no one in front of him. There is now that, you know, whether the ball should be killed. Better. So you thought there was enough time to even make a catch if no, you're Southern? I, no, I do not. Uh, it was close, but there was no flag. I don't see him throwing a flag now. There was no flag thrown, but I think they're going to kill it there about time. Will be off, not a fumble. Cannot be returned. Let's take another look. Here's Jordan Eastling, the returner. It looks like the ball a split second yeah, before did. the Cowboys it did. did. It sure did. It was a nice job of coverage by East, and uh, boy, just couldn't handle the uh, the punt for side of 30. That's a heck of a job by our crew to keep the flags in their pockets with that play happening so fast. Tyron Sutton's first grab. The all-conference receiver into the red zone. 41 catches last year for the Cowboys. He gets his tonight. Nice read there by uh, Cody Orgeron. He's reading the defensive line, defensive linebackers. They came on the run. He hit the uh, the hitch route outside to the inside. Here they go. Straight to the line. Hand off right at the middle. Jacoby Skinner past the five. Sophomore from Sulphur. Nice job of the lineman up front making a hole there by... Uh, Skinner, you can go in. Skinner again, right up the gut. Side. It was second one, and so this may be enough for the first down. And it will be first and goal coming. It is a first down. Yeah. Skinner. Brought you play three point roll. You're going back and think just he's saying, hey, just roll it. Same play, same play. They're. They're down to the one, same formation, every year. The number three for again. It's a fun charm. No, I get on top. Come. It's come. Next on the big guys, bringing in extra offensive linemen, tight end, fullback, to their goal from the one. Big Trey Newton checks in, the senior from Spring, Texas. Juan Gross at 5'11", 239 is the fullback. Skinner, the tailback. Again, Skinner. He's hot down. His first touchdown in a Cowboy uniform and the first point for McNeese in the Sterling Gilbert era. Almost got caught on the outside by coming around the corner, but he's great job of and, uh, keeping the flag driving to get into that end zone for the first score here for Mac The muff punt return. Noah Anderson, redshirt freshman from Lafayette, on to attempt the PAT. And he punches it through. First points of 2019, Cody Skinner. And the Cowboys on top, 7 0 in Lake Charles. Yeah. Mom, Dad. The cross? It's the fastest growing sport in America. Dr. Pepper, the official drink of fans. It's going to be a big year. the house Carly mentioned that perhaps eclipse the 20,000 mark here at Cowboys Stadium and might get the record which was 20,300 set back in two, uh, 2002 when Grambling came to town yeah I mean and they're sitting on the side of the hill in the back of the end zone also filling those seats because there is nowhere else to uh, to sit 
I don't even think Sterling uh, Gilbert even thought that they would be this kind of crowd when he took the. They're excited for football, always have been. It's a great support here uh, for Magnese. Six play, 29-yard drive, took a minute 41. Jacoby Skinner, one-yard touchdown run for a game's first points. When it is back, Rayborn booms this through the end zone. I don't know if he needed the win at his back for that one. A good leg. Line drive. <laughs> right out the back of the end zone. Southern's last drive ended in a missed field goal. Our starting line is brought to you in part by Geico. Of course, the starting quarterback is Ladarius Skelton. Devon Ben, second team preseason all I already mentioned Register, Washington, TJ Bedford, the driver. All have had an impact here in the year lowing. Southern stuff. Skelton comes up for the third time. Taking the jet sweep. He'll keep it. A good lead block as he cuts it to the outside. And stays in bounds to get a few more by the junior quarterback. Really nice run. Nice nice blocking out front. To, uh, just knocking McNeese players down right and left. And get his uh, on a quarterback. Had 520 yards on the ground last season. That was second on the team. In addition to eight rushing touchdowns. Darius Daniels, one of the Cowboys to chase him out. Skelton to throw. Looking deep, register open. He had him there, just uh, threw it to over the bounds, really. But he had him wide open down the sideline, just an out and up there, uh, that uh, receiver register. Well, they tested Cordell Williams on that deep throw. As you look at the Cowboy defense, Chris Living, 20 and a half sacks in his career, four top row. Junior from Houston with seven career sacks. It is a good defensive front for Cowboy defense. Ben up the middle, get third and along seven. Nice job there by Cordell Williams coming off the corner, uh, off the edge from the outside to make the tackle there for a game. Skin just lead at 52 percent passes. Oh, he's much in the category. I need this through quick to drive. With time, floating it down the sideline, some contact and a flag down. He didn't have to on that either because the touchable uh, for that pass interference there by Cole Richardson on the ball, like three yards out of bounds, and uh, they're going to call pass interference. In your fat and rude, the intended target. And the pass interference will keep the drive alive. <laughs> With the receivers, Skelton's going to test. McNeese secondary. Anything on his first read and then he had on the outside just on the go route and he just laid it up trying to make it like a jump ball, but the ball was out of bounds. Ball just shy of the McNeese 41. The fake to Ben. Skelton will run. And dragging with them for a few yards. Darius Daniels, sophomore from Iowa, was holding on for dear life, but the gain is close to nine. I mean, they actually faked the speed sweep to Washington, then faked up inside to the running back there, uh, Ben, and then Skelton keeps it there for nine yards. Looked like a, a fullback running up in there. Listed at 6'2", 210. And all sorts of space up the middle. And then the driver of those legs. Skelton again. Shorter game, but enough for the first. Carries, first down. All these looks Southern is being in the way of a, of a triple to attack. You have quarterback, you have been. See, the jet sweep, which they've used a couple of times. Right, just the lead option on the pass play. Now you fake the inside zone. The end takes the running back, the quarterback pulls it, and then all of a sudden you have Cordell Williams coming off the edge. To make the play on their skeleton. Well, Williams has been busy. Saw so nine tackles last year, but now the starting chunks of linebacker. Lost a two. First down marker at the 21. Register the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Bedford and Washington are to the right of Skelton. The time stepping up into the end zone has registered. Flag down, catch made, touchdown, and it's actually TJ Bedford on the grab. 
flags down after the touchdown as well. Good celebration, but the touchdown should stand. I think it was the Baron still make the catch. He had him beat by a yard or two, and it was just a little underthrown. Magnese gets called for interference, but he makes the catch for a touchdown. The flag that came in late actually was there. No celebration penalty. And Mark no out to try to tie the game. Extra point is good. Well, we just talked about it, Stan. Sucking hat. That can see a piece of it. Chick-fil-A down to 2018 to Texas. Isn't it as well as uh, Chick-fil-A does? The chicken's super tender and honestly the best nuggets I've ever tasted. The human jukebox, the Southern Band. Much to be excited about. 33-yard touchdown pass. Ladarius Skilton to TJ Bedford. Agamis at 7 with 3.22 to go first quarter. Good job by Southern. Come out. Give up a touchdown. Then come right back and get a touchdown of your own. Up what early adjustments could the Cowboys make defensively? Because, again, Southern's testing them deep multiple times per drive. What they're doing is they're running the football against Magnese right now. So Magnese is starting up some of the safeties to get to stop the running attack. And then all of a sudden you hit the uh, bucket safeties are coming too close to the line of scrimmage. Good to see Cesar Baraja on the field. The open kickoff. Now he's lumping as he goes downfield. He's not looking to make a tackle on this play like he did on the game's opening kickoff, which led to him being hurt. Did get some good leg on that ball. And brought down right around the 20. Let's go down to the field and Carly McCord. Well, guys, the Cowboys only have a new head coach, but they also have a new sideline. What are you talking about? You may be from 1965. They actually stood on the visitor's sideline every single home game. And this year, they decided to be on the press box sideline, mainly because of the sun. As you can see, on the visitor sideline, it takes a while for them to get shade. They didn't want to stand there while they were waiting and hearing to go out on the feet in their eyes. It's a huge difference in the heat of August, guys. Absolutely. A walk from the auxiliary parking lot where we had to park two couple days. Humidity and... That 85%, that's a normal Louisiana Saturday night. Sterling Gilbert's getting used to that. A lot of traditions as delay a game is called on the Cowboys. Well, Sterling's trying to hold his group on the sideline in a huddle. In the line of scrimmage, but the official is holding the ball, not allowing it to snap until Southern comes on the field and they end up getting a delay a game now first and 15. One tradition ending with Gilbert's arrival. The first time since 1990, a new McNeese head coach did not have McNeese ties. The guy watched that did pretty well. Bobby Kiesler, <laughs> your, your old coach. Yeah, great, uh, great career here in uh, building this program. Yeah. It's always been a great program. Um, and they've just keep going since then. Mm -hmm. Sutton the grab. Caleb Carter knocked him out. And as usual, McNeese going tempo. It's a gain of six and a dangerous throw on second intercepted. Where's your looking for something again? Yeah, that's Cody got that first one, picked up about eight yards, and then just automatically in his mind made himself, he was going to throw it no matter what, and it's not there. He actually has the guy going down the boundary because the corner cheated. He saw it. He wanted to pick it for, for a touchdown. So that's one of those things Cody's got to learn from. Jordan Eastling, another Texas State transfer, saw that coming. Still thinking he should have had the interception. It is Bro. first down. <laughs> to the 35. Nice job by Orgeron. Sitting in the pocket, letting that curl route come in. Already to the line, ready to go again. Timeout Southern. Timeout. They got they got caught with the substitutions, and they had to have a timeout to stop it. Well, we were talking to those close to They told us that. It was as good a conditioned team. They can obviously have the heat of August to have to deal with an August offense. Those close to the program were telling us how impressed they were with the conditioning of this squad in the early months of Sterling Gilbert's tenure. Well, not only the speed that the offense is going, to be, but the defense going against them in practice all being an off ball. Mm. And they're going against that speed. You get to play other teams that play against in practice. You get adjusted. You get used to it. Early in the season like this, those first couple of nights out, it's really going to depend on how good a shape you're in with this heat. So the Orgeron's best pass of the night so far. Yeah, it actually gets pressure from the right. He almost gets there, gets it, stands in the pocket, makes a great, strong throw. For him. From the 35, Skinner, who has his touchdown, thrown back as well. Forward progress will make it likely no gain. Jalen Ivey from Tioga able to bring him down. 
I think that was um, like the Mac. Yeah, it was Mac first carry there up inside. Just uh, got stumped. Skinner 34, Mac 4. It's sometimes from up here, it's hard to see those numbers. <laughs> it's a life Mac transfer. You see him, junior from Punta Gorda, Florida. Orgeron pressured, sacked. <laughs> David Cotton, the LSU transfer, a redshirt freshman. On the nation Ivy. Great pressure up inside there from Southern. Uh, split it. He could not. Looking downfield, he's getting pressure, he's getting stunts. They have to up the middle. Too many free rushers. Cotton played in a couple of games at LSU last season. Staying in Baton Rouge to play football now at Southern. Third and long, Orgeron out of bounds. And Southern has forced the punt. One of those with Cody, he'll he'll realize as it goes along, the game goes along, the season goes a little longer on that one. He really didn't have pressure. He had some guys coming around the outside. He could step up, still look down, field to make a play. End up being fourth there, fourth down and 13. Here. Tell you what, they better be careful tonight, Magnese. To me, look a little slow on the punting tonight. They're going to come after him at some point. Or not. And this easily is best. And it touched a Jaguar, and yet the man back, Devon Ben, was able to recover. His uncle just passed the 20. He was wanting to catch it, then he decided not to the way the hit the ground, hit him in the leg, and almost gave up another, another turnover. Magnese. Magnese's first touchdown coming off a muffed punt. Their drive just 29 yards. Dalton O'Donnell Jaguars. Last time all went seven plays, 75 yards. In third down, Ladera skilled into T.J. Bifford. Christopher Cheney, the tailback. That pass on the ground, and a flag is down. Pass was batted down at the line. Let's we'll see what the flag is all about. Roughing the pass today, got Cameron Peterson. A sophomore on the penalty. Oh, actually, no. It was Cordell Williams going low, and yeah. that's why the throw. Yeah, he was uh, nobody blocking Cordell Williams, and he just comes in really low and goes down for the uh, knee, and that's what he called. The ball now at the 36. The zone read fake. Nice grab. No. As he went to the ground, the ball pops out. Bedford can do for the Southern offense. He has been dangerous in the first quarter, including the touchdown. Think height, great speed. And boy, if you can run the football and bring all those guys to use that height and get downfield, well, that's a that's a quarterback's dream. Play the first half of the season last year at Texas State. Eight catches, 90 yards before he was dismissed from the team. Second and ten. Step split, so you should play. Here's oh. Cheney's first carry. Sidesteps the defender. Sidesteps two. Full chases him out of bounds. Four step. Austin Odoms calls Cheney, the junior from Jack of Louisiana, the most improved of any. I think great wide to miss. He do miss to get the first down. For a has two guys unblocked to make the play. Neither one make the play. Just a great job of running with the football. Seconds remaining in the first. Fiction. Hits to Washington. To the edge and into McNeese territory. Perhaps another first down. Well, Southern has really tried to get the ball to Washington a lot early in this game. Just using his speed, his quickness to get him out in space to make people miss. 16 catches last year by Dalen Richardson to spring him free. Clock running, and that'll do it in the first. So McNeese getting on the board first, but after the punt return, it has been Southern with more fun so far, at least on the stagy for the Cowboys. It's changing the up. It's been at home. The USO. And coming in, Ladaria Skelton and his Jaguars would pose quite a challenge. Yeah, they would. They're just because of their experience. 
but also because of a new coaching staff here at Magnese. Magnese has always had a great defense. They've always built themselves around the defense. But you've got a new staff coming in. It takes time for that defense to learn what you want them to do. First quarter yards, Southern 121, McNeese 40. Fresh set of downs as we begin the second quarter. And looking deep, Skelton for register. Touchdown. They beat McNeese deep again. Well, what a great throw there by uh, Skelton. Just play action up the middle, going deep. It's just one-on-one -on -one with the receiver and the DB. That's Register going against the one and a great throw catch for a long touchdown there. Register the transfer of Minnesota with it. I mean, just lays it right out in front with Register, makes the catch in the middle of the end zone to put him ahead, 13 to 7. Beating Colby Richardson and Southern with a lead. One play into the second quarter. The Jaguars on top by a touchdown. The teams are ready. Are you ready? Our touchdown grab has Southern on top. His head coach Dawson Odoms told us, Stan, he is healthy for the first time in a long time. He just had six catches all of last year and described him as a tremendous deep threat. And did he show that on the Southern touchdown? Yeah, with Register and Bedford and Washington, all the receivers that Skelton has, and if Magnese wants to play one-on-one -on -one versus them, they're going to put it up all night long and see if they can just outrun them. On the return, this is DeAndre Hicks. Knocked down just shy of the 25. Let's go down to the field and Carly. Well, guys, we've talked a lot about the coaching staff and their admiration for Cody Ogeron, but what did the quarterback have to say about how he feels about starting today? Well, he told me, of course, he's anxious, a few nerves, as it is the first week of football. It's a big thing for him. Obviously, this is a big deal as he settles into that starting role. But he says, overall, he's ready for this. He was born to do this job. He truly feels like he's prepared. And overall, he has a lot of confidence in the game plan that Coach Gilbert has brought to the table. He said, really, at the end of the day, it's just all about going out there and executing. And if they can do that, they can be successful guys thank you carly one thing sterling gilbert said about cody orgeron he just carries himself very well he has those leadership qualities junior from mandeville who started his mcneese career as a six string walk-on quarterback now starting the 2019 campaign he's five of seven for 45 yards so far through the year quickly to the line but a flag down Magnus is so quick. The receivers are not sure who's on the ball, who's off me? the ball, it's, and gets um, caught. It's, yeah, I'll find it, but it's just the F Schultz. But I'll, I'll, let me see if I can get a helmet, and I'll bring, bring Josh. 12. Now Sterling Gilbert looks on his team so far. Nice penalties, 45 yards. So they're in one penalty for 10 yards. Was asked, you hurt yourself, and that's where they're at right now in Magnus. And realizing that, McNeese has to call timeout. They'll still have two remaining. Well, Sterling Gilbert said of Cody Orgeron, he simply he played her name to Strutter out of spring ball adoption during fall camp. What's funny about Cody, he was five foot six when he got to high school. He realized even with a father like Ed Orgeron, of course, the head coach at LSU, football's in the future. So we started from this. His mom is a... All of a sudden, however, Cody gained six inches in high school. He was six feet tall. Full of shot. And he and his twin brother, Parker, were a dynamite combination of Mandeville High School. Yeah, they were. And, uh, you know, Parker ended up coming here and playing uh, for Magnese and had some injuries and had to, uh, to quit playing. And then... Uh, Cody follows as a walk-on and then uh, ends up uh, becoming the starter this year. And, you know, he played in every game last year, started three games last year as a quarterback. So uh, he has some experience, just with not with this coaching staff. He was a state champion in tennis in high school. Looking to get McNeese to tie things up again after Southern has put 14 straight on the board. Squeezing through a nice run for Skinner, making a little something out of nothing. Flag down, however.
for all the promise around this McNeese offense with Sterling Gilbert here. Foul Personal foul is called on the Jaguars. Yeah, he called flat there is what the good call in the But it's not to care who's the head coach. Timing rate fast. They were 101st in the FCS last season at 111th in yards per game at just 291. Well, you know, as a coaching staff, you come in and you want your guys, the guys you go recruit, the guys you bring in. And uh, nice run there up inside there by Skinner. But these aren't the guys that he brought in. He came here as a head coach and took over what was here. Now, that's no excuse. You bring your – but once he gets the guys he really wants, I believe you'll see something more in the passing game, more as the receivers and uh, – you see him right now just picking the tempo up there with the completion. Sean Hudson, the senior, is in a McNeese uniform into Southern Ontario. Skinner, it's been the best back so far. Of course, just a gain of one. You know, McNeese has to keep the ball, move the ball, at least to give their defense a breather on the sideline. Give them a little rest, move down, even if it's to the point of maybe getting a field goal or going down to score a touchdown. But give that defense a little bit of a rest. Southern player down, and the clock is will be second and nine for the Cowboys from the Southern 43-yard line. That's David Cotton, the LSU transfer. Rest your freshman from Shreveport. And some will jog off the field on his own power. Southern is on the road, but contingent the fans who travel. I mean, they have full the inside of Cowboys Stadium, and they're the reason why we have so many fans sitting on the grass behind the north end zone yeah they have a great following and they follow them everywhere it does not matter how far it is along the drive. nothing ready to go now second and nine this is pratt to burst of speed he's on his feet and his big boys behind him are going to push him forward for a couple of extra yards a gain of seven <laughs> Third down, coming up for the Cowboys. so we've seen pratt senior from spring texas He's about to come out, and now Elijah McElroy's in the USF transfer. Third tailback we'll see for McNeese here on this drive. Down in two, and this is probably one of those uh, go far it on fourth down if you don't make it. Hodge on controls. Hudson second grab, and a good block in front of him by Sutton. Enough for the first. That's one of those reads by Orgeron that they brought the guy off of the corner. Southern brought him off the corner to stop the run. He just pulls it out and hits a quick screen outside. How about Sutton, the all-conference receiver, doing the job, blocking a field to free Hudson for first down yardage. Here's Mack. Six feet, 207. He played two years at South Florida for Sterling Gilbert. Had 59 yards on the ground last year. Well, you see right now Southern's defensive line. They're just sitting at the line of scrimmage. They're not even rushing. They're sitting at the line of scrimmage to read so that the quarterback can't read anybody coming upfield. They're just waiting for him. Back again, looking to cut it inside and brought down from behind. Got a helmet off for one of the Southern players. They'll have to leave the game. It'll be third down here in about four. It's Hunter Clay, sophomore from Lafayette, having to jog off the field. This is four down territory. First Cowboys looking to convert third and four. I think under the win, mm -hmm. um, you've seen Southern move the ball kind of at will against your defense. You're going to have to try to score with them. And a redshirt freshman kicker in Noah Anderson. Orgeron will keep and knock down a couple of yards shy of the marker. He had a lead blocker in Mag, but what a job coming from behind to prevent the first down. Jordan Eastling's had himself a whale of a first half. Jordan Eastling was actually a corner that came off of the edge. And they go for it quickly on fourth and two. Mack, first down, brought down shy of the 15. And you can see Coach Sterling Gilbert right now. He's telling him to go. Go again, same play, same formation. The ball's being snapped, and they're not even down yet. Orgeron fakes the hitch and will dive forward for short yardage. Orgeron then wanted to throw the ball outside to the receiver for a screen, and uh, the receivers were blocking, not looking for the ball. Must have missed the call. Well, for all the struggles the Cowboy offense had last season, in the red zone was where they struggled the most. Touchdowns on just 38% of their red zone drives in 2018. And they did get the score in the, red in the first quarter on just a 29-yard drive. 
Orgeron scrambling and will be sacked behind the 20. Did he scramble too soon? Uh, yeah, I think so. He's looking out to his left. He didn't like what he saw, but all of a sudden he came open late. There was a hut well, late. time to scramble a little early. You know, you're going so fast. fast. Deep fun. Are not but you can sit back there. Jordan Lewis, wearing number 32, was one of the Jaguars there. First team preseason all swack on the sack. Now third down with the six. Third and 15. Swinging it. And a short game to set up full time. Yeah, it's going to be fourth and long. They'll have to go field goal now. Well, all-conference kicker Gunnar Rayborn no longer here. 36 field goals in his Cowboy career. And so the redshirt freshman Noah Anderson for his first field goal attempt in a Cowboy uniform. Be yards. It's Brett. Left. And the lefty from the left hash. Will it get there? It just does. Doesn't have to look pretty. Number three gets three. This Cowboy is within 14-10. U.S. Open tomorrow on ESPN. After giving up back-to-back -back deep touchdowns to Southern, catch team play 57 yard to just five minutes, and a 37 yard field goal has Magnese within four. Yeah, at least you know they got points out of it. You know it was three, but at least they fifth play. They move on the field. You give defense a little bit of rest. Make it with a few adjustments here in the second quarter. If not, they're going to have to make an adjustment. Yeah. But those shots deep and long all game long, using that length and height and speed that they have. Already we've seen touchdown throws, 43 yards for Southern to the 6'5 Hunter Register and the 6'4 TJ Bedford. Bailey Rayborn handling kickoff duties for the Cowboys 2019. And two yards deep. Checks it in with room down the sideline past the 30 and Rayborn upends him past the 35. They'll actually mark him at the 34. Let's go down to the field in Carly. Well, that McNeese has to announce the passing right Thomas the Butter manager here for the Cowboys since the 1990. He was also former president of the and as well as inducted into the Cowboys Hall of Honors back in 1987 years old. The his passing and the team wanted to do something special to honor him and everything that he's done for this program so they did so by wearing the decals on the back of their helmets today with his initials F E. and of course our condolences are really here at sports television to the thomas family gain of two on the first down carry for southern so second down and eight the sure for harley mccord with you plenty on the play clock Last two sides that combined 154 yards of offense. Matt incomplete. Looked like a didn't mean to throw to the tight end, Jeremiah Houston. Trying to run a little play action up inside and slipping the tight end in, in behind the linebackers. And uh, it's happened in such a small area that it didn't look uh, didn't look deflected and picked off there by Magnus. This is just Southern's third, third down of not third and eight as the Cowboy fans begin to get loud. Skelton pressure. Brought down from behind. Forcing fourth down. Stephen Connerly, the sophomore from Plaquemine, brings him down. Secondary today with the receivers downfield. Did give Skelton any room? Fred Meyer, uh, make him stay with him to make him uh, to get the sack ball. It's the first time in a while that, in fact, the first time all day, rather, we will see Cesar Baraja come out to punt. Now remember, he is the kickoff man and got hurt on the opening kickoff. Any let that affects this. Alive, this Kyron Sutton, the running grab. And here he comes past the 20. Wrapped up around the 25. Nice special teams tackle by Kobe Hartman. Just about halfway through the second, and the Cowboys a chance to take the lead with a touchdown. The head coaching debut of Sterling Gilbert. 
prolific offenses on the FBS level. He was an offensive coordinator at USF, Texas, Tulsa, and Bowling Green all in the last five years. His offense is averaging just almost 34 points a game and 478 yards a contest. Arizona looking to throw on first down, flushed out. And will go down. Was able to get close to three yards. Davin Cotton, good to see him back in the field. Banged up on the last drive, able to bring down the McNeese quarterback. Orgeron's going through just maybe one and not even getting to the second read right now. He needs to get to that second read sometimes before he scrambles. An empty set on second down. Catch made first down up the middle. At the 40-yard line is where DeAndre Hicks is brought down. Times we've seen an empty set from this McNeese offense. Yeah, they motioned out of a uh, two by two receivers back to and uh, there in the uh, in the Colorado, and then he moved again and uh, saved the foot. Gonna Mac to the Cowboy tailbacks, high school teammates Hicks and the and no chance for Hicks. So that carry a loss of one. It's on a carry, also he's back to the 39. Senior from Amy, one of the Jaguars, the tackle. The sophomore as well. Second down, a long 10. Up the middle this time, Hicks able to get to the 44, again a five. five again, they're running that inside zone, and Orgeron's reading that defensive end, whether they give it or pull it. That defensive end is just sitting at the line of scrimmage and just waiting in the tackle for like two or three, but he's not getting that big run that they need. This time a four-wide set for Orgeron. Hicks in the backfield. Begui and Nate Briscoe with the receivers to Orgeron's left. Final play clock. Blitz coming. Orgeron saw it to a try. Side steps, looking for Sutton and threw his hands incomplete. He felt pressure from the right. Moved a little too much to the left. He actually moved into more pressure instead of just stepping up and making the play. He'll learn from it. He'll have to see cover on that side. He was looking to the right. He got flushed out to the left and have some uh, Sutton number one just was not able to get him the football. He had the perfect person to ask bowl champ dozen years in the NFL. How long does it take for you not to, to kind of feel that implied pressure? Because it looked like Orgeron could have stayed in the pocket a little longer. Yeah, what it takes is it takes you knowing exactly who is blocking Wahoo. The that's what it takes. Uh, great punt there uh, by Magnese uh, into the end. Flag is down at midfield. But what it takes is a quarterback. It knows, uh, as a quarterback, you know who everybody is blocking. When they bring pressure and blitz, you know this guy's picked up. No, he's not picked up if he comes. Until you feel comfortable knowing that as a protection, this is flash, you're going to take off. If you know he's blocked, you're not going anywhere. Take some time to gain confidence. It takes a I lot imagine, of time. I imagine you went through that as well. Yes, very much so. So, the punt into the end zone by Rayborn, and let's see what the flag's all about. It's going to be on Southern. Holding the call against a holding call on a punt that was not returned. And so Southern will have it deep in its own territory when we come back to a sold-out Cowboy Stadium. We'll find out later tonight if it's the biggest crowd to ever see a McNeese game. And it's a long story. Darius Skelton and his Southern Jaguars up 14-10 with the ball from their own 10. Devon Ben, a game of about four. Coming at 5.30 remaining. Both teams two timeouts left. So no sports on balls. 33 yards. Has been backed up here. No, now second and six. Need to hold him here to punt the football or maybe get the ball at midfield. Southern pick to finish first in the SWAC. What? Dawson Odens and his team wants a SWAC title. That may be good enough to do it. Elton pressured, wrapped up, thrown down. That's Chris Livings. Now he won't the sack because it's a game about one. But coming in, the fifth-year senior from here on Lake Charles, 20 and a half sacks in his career. Yeah, he just great job of pressure up inside. Elton goes to scramble a little bit. He actually gets about half a yard so there. He needs ten and a half sacks to uh, become an all-time uh, leader here tonight. Heavy. Skelton floating in for Bedford. Too long. Flying down on the far side of the field. Incomplete, but there is a 
Nice. Looked like McNeese might have jumped, uh, got across in another one of those free plays, uh, not watching the ball it being a third down and one. It could be a first. This will be a first because the nose of the ball on that snap was just ahead of the 15, and the first down marker was right at the 20. Sixth Cowboy pen. Sound first would have to go. Washington. There he is, a sophomore from Iowa with the big stuff. Nice job on the outside there by uh, Magnese filling from the outside. 16. There's Richardson, uh, uh, Kobe Richardson making the play on the outside also. Under four minutes to go in the second quarter. You will be able to see and hear the Southern Band, the human jukebox. At halftime, first Jaguars looking for some more points. Skelton going deep this time for Register, coming back and incomplete, but a flag down. Colby Richardson on coverage. This is on Richardson again for the Jaguars. This was close, though. Did Register come back and try to pull his defender back? Yeah, he had an underthrown ball, so he was able to come back. But with that underthrown ball like that, that uh, that makes the defense in a vulnerable position not looking for the ball. They have tested Richardson deep all night. Pass interference on the Cowboys. And the Just kind of putting it up in the air, and you see him. Oh, that's, I'm going to tell you what, that's a little bit of an offensive interference. He put both hands around the back to pull him by, and then that's when Richardson put the arms out to hold him when he was pulling him by. Yeah, if anything, he's guilty of not turning around. Yes. But he's trying to stay step for step with the Minnesota transfer the whole time. From the 36. A sweep to Ben. Cowboys there. And Ben loses a yard. Justin Jackson, grand transfer from Missouri City, Texas on the stop. Yeah, nice job by the defense just uh, uh, dragging it out, delaying it out as far as they can all the way to the sideline. And then the support getting there uh, to make the play there for actually a loss there of a yard. Both teams, two timeouts left. Both coaches keeping that so far. Blitz. Skelton lost the ball. Oh, the boys have it. Ball came out before the arm went forward. Cowboy football. Carlos Sott, the junior from Houston. Definitely just goes to throw the football and just slips right out of his hand. Uh, Gray has to scoop it, score, and misses it. And was able to pull that ball on about the 18-yard uh, line now. And give Justin Jackson credit for pushing Skelton away right there before Scott comes up and makes the recovery. Scott adds some experience to this Mackey's defense. One of two years for college playing their first game here on Le Charles and their defensive coordinator coach to Navarro the last two seasons. In the red zone, ball just shy of the 13. Pratt. No game. Just that inside, just it up inside. Uh, Southern doing a nice job of uh, slowing Pratt down before he gets going. The pursuit gets there. Just no gain, second down. Now, coming for Orgeron. Hudson and Sutton are the receivers on the bottom of your screen. Trips to Orgeron's right. One look. Orgeron keeps it. Gain of maybe a couple. That was an empty set quarter draw called all the way. Uh, Southern did a, a defensive uh, tackle, kind of looped from all the way around the uh, the end and uh, caught Orgeron before he was able to even get more than a yard. There's a lot of beef on this defensive line for Southern. Davin Cotton, the LSU transfer at 280. C.J. Bryant, who was in on the stop. Senior from Spring, Texas at 295. on champion. There he is, number 91. You just got a glimpse of him. Mid-90 pins. Now time out called, and the Cowboys will take it. 154 to go. Now Southern looks for the stop. Third and nine, coach just uh, bringing them to the side, trying to make sure they get the call. He really uh, with a minute and 54 left to go here at the half. 
Well, tune in to CST Saturday 28th. Our next live Southland Conference football telecast will be in Natchitoches, 6 o'clock. South Indiana coming off a huge win over number 6 Jacksonville State two days ago. Lions will take on the Northwestern State Demons. Check our website, CoxSportsTV.com, for updates on what Southland Conference games you'll see this season on Cox Sports Television. Can we tell them? We'll be right. Cowboys will host Southeastern. Have you been with the Southern defensive front so far? I, I've been impressed with the defensive front game uh, of McNeese right now. The linebackers in the defensive front. Uh, that way, their safeties are able to stay back and help cover with the corners. In the uh, in the other game, their safeties are having to get up to stop the run, and it's leaving their corners one on one. Southern history, they give McNeese the first loss to never. Third down with a first down marker just past the four. Blitz. Archer into the end zone. Touchdown. Trevor Key. His catch gives the Cowboys a. Southern comes out. Like man, man across the board. One guy's coming free from Southern, but Orgeron reads it, gets the throw out early, lays it out in front, and makes a great read and a great throw before pressure. You can see the guy getting there and nobody to block him. Great job of getting it outside on a mismatch there. He actually moved him into the slot uh, to get the mismatch there. First. The man who holds St. Thomas Moore High School record for total touch there. Found grab in 2019. Ten in a row for McNeese, and they lead with 149 to go. Both touchdowns coming on turnovers for Southern, and so McNeese is able to, to score on short field. But uh, great job reading and getting out early. Now, young quarterback, first ever start. His confidence, his first touchdown pass of the year. Just to go into the locker room with that play, that happening right before half, to feel good, to make some adjustments at halftime with Coach uh, Gilbert uh, in the uh, in the locker room, and then come back out to the second half with a lot of comfort. So some two timeouts left. We talked multiple times about their deep threat, so plenty of time to at least tie it, if not take the lead. We'll join Cox Sports Television's following game and post-game coverage every week. You can tune in Monday, September 9th, as we kick off the season with day at 4.30 and Saints tonight, live after the game, as the Saints host the Houston Texans at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. That's Saints game day on CST. Houston Texans, by the way, trading Jadavian Clowney earlier today. I'm born in Ray Connecticut for the Monday night opener. Houston has no chance. <laughs> Who the winner of today's trade was? Drew Brees. Clowney won't be coming after him on the first Monday night of the NFL season. Great kick. Great kick to the back of the end zone. So again, 149 left. And Southern with two timeouts. They'll have it from their own 25. Your thoughts on Ladarius Skill so far? Uh, I thought he played really well the first half. Had a really nice first half. With the uh, ball slipping out of his hand with a turnover. Uh, and then Magny scoring seven. Made some great plays down the field. Ran the ball hard up inside. Strong run up inside. Get more of that uh, in the second half. Well, they don't want to run him a ton to get up inside. Both Magny's touchdowns coming off turnovers, including the fumble last play offensively. Ban up the middle. Gain of just over two. Cowboys got on the board first. Jacoby Skinner one to back scores for Southern. Touchdown grabs of 33 and 43 yards. They led 14-7 after the first play of the second quarter. Well, the Cowboys have scored 10 unanswered ends. Well, Southern really going slow, which surprises me here. Taking a lot of time off the clock here. Especially with those deep we've been talking about. Skelton with a flag down. Slung down. Clues for a moment. Skelton ruled down. Well, I apologize. Skelton was able to break away for a moment, but he was ruled down on the turf of the 33. So the flag a little bit. A legal shift on Southern. Busy first half for a referee, Christian Wilson. So Dawson Odoms, Southern's unable to take the lead back. Well, what an advance. Don't leave at halftime, folks. We will see the human amongst our halftime festivities here. 
They are the headliner. Ben. Trying to cut it inside and slipped around the 30. I'm surprised, too, that Southern is not being more aggressive. Yeah, you know, you take with the receivers that you have with the size and everything, you, you take shots sometimes and just put it up as a ball. Sterling Gilbert. Happy to let this clock left. Jackson's going to, at least it looks like, eat two timeouts heading into the halftime locker room. Southern will need to run one more play. And brought down just shy of the first down marker, and that's going to do it. So Southern will let the clock run out. Sterling Gilbert, his first ever game as a college head coach, will go into the locker room with the lead. 17-14 after the game's first 30 minutes. Yeah, a nice first half there for Magnus. And the going to the locker room, make some adjustments, see how quick uh, you're going uh, to adjust there. Ladarius Skelton, a solid first half. Two deep touchdown passes. There's the Cowboys looking to stay undefeated against SWAC teams in its history. 12-0 coming in with the lead of the break by a score of 17-14. to Let's go down to Carly McCord. How it has been coaching your first half here at Peace Out here. We, you know, getting after, we got a great environment here. You know, guys got to continue to excel and execute at a high level, go out and be productive, get results right here, and just be physical. Uh, you know, we got to come bring it out in the second half. And when you're able to score on your nerves, talk about how important it is to be able to capitalize on yeah. the. It's huge. And you're able to go get four you know, points off of it. That, that's big time. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Carl. And thanks to the head coach of the Cowboys, Sterling Gilbert. 17 14. McNeese on top. And the season opener here in Leeches. <laughs> when you're over, overpaying, get it on eBay. The lead at halftime for McNeese over Southern. Southland Conference has already named Players of the Week for soccer, and Avery Cortez is the Offensive Player of the Week. She had a hat trick last week in HBU's win review. Menkert also for ABU to put in that win for her review. She's the Defensive Player of the Week. And the Goalkeeper of the Week in the Southland Conference is Aaron Smith. Abilene Christian, the defending conference champs, going on the road with wins at UTEP and New Mexico State. Our Southland Conference Players of the Week brought to you by Mid-South Bank. 17-14, the lead for McNeese over Southern. We're at halftime at Lake Charles. pleasure being here with Mr. Kedrick Taylor. He's the director of the Southern University Human Jukebox. Look, this band has the be best reputation. I know that everyone, you don't see an empty seat. Not one person is out of their seat at halftime waiting to see you all perform. Talk about the honor it is them. Honor uh, uh, here at Southern University, we have legacy and we brought them being outstanding. They were still getting better than we were our last performance. So we're trying to outperform our last performance. So but uh, we, we love Performing for the people, uh, being an entertainer, that's what we do. Uh, we just pride ourselves on being the human jukebox. You stick a quad in and it'll play anything. And you know what? I love that you heard play at the Rose Bowl this year, yeah. the Rose Bowl Parade. Talk about how excited you are for that. But it, these young men and women. It's, it means a lot. Uh, some of these students never been able to go let alone be, be performing a parade or such uh, with millions of people. And for the state of Louisiana, we're going to be one of the only HBCUs to be able to be in that parade and perform. So for us, it's a huge honor. So what can we expect you all tonight? Or me uh, Expect the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, expect the bet that I'll see. Well, we appreciate your time. Good luck to you all. Wait on back more from the Southern University Human Jukebox here live on Cox Sports Television. Max at the Southern Bayman Jukebox about to get started here on Lake Charles.
1714, McNeese with the Hopkins Humphreys will rejoin me after these words. Of Lake Charles Cowboy Stadium, McNeese looking for a season opening win and Sterling Gilbert's first game as head coach here, a 1714 lead over Southern. Davis Salzman alongside Stan Humphreys, Carly McCord down on the field. Turnovers, a huge part of this first half as we're about to see first half highlights both cowboy touchdowns coming off turnovers including we're about to see this muffed punt return by southern setting up shot for mcneese at the southern 29 and jacoby skinner would run it in from one yard out 
Yeah, just a turnover there in the kicking game, kick game, and then Skinner uh, puts it in the end zone for the first touchdown. The second turnover was Skelton, just the ball slipping out of his hands. Magnese recovering the ball, and then all of a sudden Orgeron hitting the corner route in the corner of the end zone right before half to put him up. Orgeron finding the cards out, 149 left. Southern, their strength has been going with the balls. Yeah, just put the ball up deep. Uh, Maggie's having to come and try to stop the running game, and Southern's just putting it up deep with their big, tall, lanky receivers and going up. So your touchdown catch for T.J. Bitford, a 43-yard touchdown catch. Red Riding Southern with their two touchdowns. Our halftime stats brought by Life. Southern with the edge in total yards, 161 to 119. Ladarius Skelton in the first half is 5 of 9 for 104 yards and two touchdowns. Cody Orgeron, 10 of 13, passing for 88 yards in the touchdown that we just saw a couple of moments ago. Yeah, the, the big key to me is just the turnovers. You know, the penalties also, the first game back, both sides having the penalties, that's going to be there. But the turnovers right now has been able for Mac put up team points to make them up a 17 to a 14 lead here at half. The 101st season opener in Southern history. A season opener that McNeese has not seen in quite some time with this packed house here at Cowboys Stadium. 17-14, the McNeese lead at the break. 48. Now over Georgia Southern, and you can watch the post-game coverage live at 10 o'clock tonight. Join Victor Howell and Scott Shanley as they break down today's game against Georgia Southern. Jordy Rush, Jacob Hester, and Ronnie Rance are on location with in-depth analysis and interviews from players. Don't miss LSU tonight, only on Cox Sports Television. Biggest thing you think Sterling Gilbert told his team in the locker room, Stan Humphreys? Probably play faster. <laughs> can you? Yeah, I don't know if you can, because he talked about it the first half. They made some mistakes penalty-wise because they were going so fast. They couldn't get lined up. Too many guys moving. But um, I think he wants them to play faster. I think he feels like they're right at the half is he started wearing Southern down. You know, we talked about it earlier. You brought it up. He felt like that this was the best-shaped team that people have seen, McNeese. And maybe that half in the latter part of that first half started to come into effect. McNeese did run 40 plays in the first half, just 119 yards, but again, those 40 plays to Southern's 31. How much would you have liked playing in a Sterling Gilbert offense at quarterback? Well, uh, I would love playing in the in any offense nowadays, you know, because of uh, because of the way the rules are set up as far as hitting. Backs. That's why you see guys now in the NFL play until 42 because right. you can't hit them. That area that you can hit them anymore. But, yeah, getting in there to read the offense to where you're handing the ball off to the running back, you're pulling it, hitting the receivers behind the linebackers. It's a lot of reading as the play runs. And uh, that's exciting to be running as a quarterback. Sterling Gilbert is from the sideline. McNeese does have an offensive coordinator in Matt Maddox, who's coach for Sears coming into the 2019 campaign. Coach Maddox doesn't call the plays, but he stays up in the booth and helps Sterling Gilbert out all night long, including earlier in the week, setting up the game plan. So Southern will be receiving the opening kickoff to the second half. Gilbert kicks away in the third quarter under here in Lake Charles. For a moment, then taking out. Not a great idea. Check he, Thomas. Southern will have it shy of its own 20. Nice coverage there by Magnese. Yeah, he could have stayed in the end zone to get the ball out to the 25. Now you're, you're backed up to like the 17 or 18 yard line. So that's with Southern 161 yards at the water here and 57 on the ground. Officially minus two yards rushing, but that's because of sacks. He actually has 32 yards gained on the ground. For the 18. Not much room at all. No gain on first down. Nice job by the D-line. we hold on the inside. I think that was Bourgeois there that, that got in for the uh, for the tackle to uh, to basically hold him to a no gain. Be interesting to see McNeese adjustments on the defensive side of the ball for the second half for all the deep balls. There was Ben on the first down carry. He remains in the backfield on Sunday. Or actually now Christopher Cheney is for Southern. Zone read fake. Pressure. Living's chasing after Skelton, who gets away. Might have gotten a yard. Skelton carries to the 20-yard line. 
Nice pressure there by the D line. Skelton's away from it. Looking downfield, nothing there. And uh, Beckley got back. Chris Wings almost with his first sack of 2019. Yeah, it's, uh, Skelton's a hard guy to bring down with just your arm tackles. You've got to get him down around the legs and bring him down. Big third down here uh, for Magnese to get uh, Southern off the field. Four on thirds in the first half. They 20. Skelton. Oh. Uh. Only got a couple. Oh, and a late push, and the flag is down. McNeese is going to give Southern a first set of downs. John Tay Jones, the nose guard, too eager. Well, he was way out of bounds. There was no stuff. You heard me kind of go grasp there a little bit when he was scrambling. The McNeese receiver go, and he was way downfield. Nobody even anywhere around him. But you can see here, he's he's good two, three yards out of bounds and gets hit. Those are the penalty as a coaching staff that just drive you nuts because you play a great defense for three downs, and then you give a out on the field first and ten. Senior from Vashery hearing about it on the sideline. Ball moved up all the way to the 36. Skelton keeps it this time. Takes a good look and gets about five. Wait, ball loose. The fumble is ruled on the field. I think they nice football. I think they had him uh, held up in the air. Not on the ground. They had him up. He's trying to rip the ball out. I think he's able to get it out. Colby Richardson with a football in his hands. And the Cowboys have four Southern's third turnover. You know, as a defensive staff, you teach the first guy in, wrap up the second guy in, go for the ball. And you'll see it right here. They've got him brought. All of a sudden, he just pulls it out. Get that ball out of there for that third turnover there for uh, for Southern, for Magnus to get the ball going in now on the 36-yard line. Both of the Cowboy touchdowns. The starters, and then they start the drive at the Southern 36. Squeezing through is Pratt. Deep. Pile finally pushed back, but forward progress means a gain of six. They're already back to the line of scrimmage. Magnese, the receivers are already set. Linemen are waiting for the ball to be spotted. And uh, run. Remember, Magnese ran 40 plays in the first half. Nate Briscoe, the sophomore Sanchez from here in Lakers. He's got to catch up and get upfield, get on the inside of that block. The receiver on the outside had him blocked. Just cut up at the inside and take the two or three. Every play is not going to be a home run, you know, on that catch. And so you just got to take the yardage and go. Third down for ticker of the 26. Could be another four down territory if they don't start. Outside down here on Lake Charles. Pratt. Brought down at the 29. He's three yards short. From what we saw earlier in the field goal department, this is definitely a four down territory. It's a third down call. Well, about it already being four down to Trying to get a little closer and all of a sudden now get to, uh, to fourth down. 40. Pratt. Stumbling forward has enough. He needed three, got four. What balance for the 5'7 senior? But, you know, he's 197, almost 200 pounds. That 5'7 gets hidden in behind those six five offensive linemen, and it's hard to see him in there. Approaching 1,500 rushing yards in his career, Justin Pratt. Dawson Odom think his defense can come up with a stop. Orgeron will throw it away. Closest receiver in the area. Orgeron then looking to his left had two receivers. He looked at both, didn't like them, and then just basically trying to make something happen to get outside. He gets outside the pocket and throws it across the line of scrimmage. So it's no a southern defense that just allowed 20 point a game last year. Pratt stacked up third and the boys. Yeah, left tackle there, uh, Demarius Thomas there missing the block and uh, the uh, the end for Southern gets around the cor corner. A run for about a yard or two game. Good either. There's Tommy. He was a crew freshman who in half tackle the boys. As a third down nine. There's looking at off the Southern turnover. 
Argeron looking for Biggie again. Diving grab made. Did oh. the catch. What a great catch. What a great throw there by Orgeron to put it on the outside. A great play. Trevor Begbie, two touchdown grabs in the season opener. That was a pre-snap read there probably by Orgeron. Just seeing a one-on-one -on -one outside, just a quick little fake up in the inside and take his shot. Puts it where only one guy can catch it is his man, and what a great catch. For all the attention, the all-conference receiver Kyron Sutton grabs, and the transfers at wideout, Davion Curtis and Rashid Bonnet. It's Trevor Day, the star in the receiving core for the Cowboys so far tonight. That young man, what an impressive catch. 24 yards to strike from Cody Orgeron to Trevor Beggy, and it's 17 unanswered. First of the second quarter when Southern took a 14-7 lead. Cowboys now up 10. Southern three turnovers, McNeese 21 points. That's the big key right now in this ball game to get McNeese to 21 to 24 to 14 uh, lead. Well, Sterling over the attention because uh, they've been playing good defense here in Lake Charles for quite some time, and the favorites to win the slip now with their biggest deficit of the night. Don't think they're going to take it out this time. And Southern will have it from its own 25. Let's go down. Carly McCord is a special guest. Right, very special indeed. Always a pleasure playing conference commissioner for Tom Burnett here. First of all, we knew it was going to be an exciting one, but do you think it would be this exciting? All of these fans all performed at halftime. Just the support and great football going on for McNeese as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in the Southland Conference, there's not a better scenario than a full house at Cowboys Stadium. So we're really proud to start the season this way. You know, this is a great, uh, you know, regional rivalry, and the Southern fans are great tonight, and it's just a great way to start what, you know, the 150th year of college football and the 56th in the Southland Conference. So we're really proud of this, what's going on tonight. Absolutely. Tons of camaraderie that goes with college football is surrounding us as we speak. And let's talk about Sterling Gilbert, new coach to the Southland Conference. I know that you all are super proud to have him join you all. Just talk about how he's been to work with so far and what he's brought to the conference. Yeah, Coach Gilbert's been great. You know, it's all brand new here at McNeese. So I have to kind of wait and see like everyone else, all the fans here and the media and everyone else. So we're excited about uh, what uh, is planned here. Great defense at McNeese as well, and they're going to compete for a Southern Conference championship. All right, looks like we lost Carly and Commissioner Tom on the sideline. New quarterback, by the way, for Southern is Glendon McDaniel, sophomore from Dothan, Alabama. Southern call for the penalty, which will make it second down and 10 now. Yeah. Well, the reasoning behind this, uh, unless an injury uh, uh, for Skelton, you know, on the last couple of scrambles and the, the late hit out of bounds on their sideline, uh, uh, giving McDaniels a look here down 24 to 14. Yeah, Skelton did get stripped to the football on Southern's last drive. We'll see how long McDaniel stays in. And coming up over his own player was Ben. That's a shame for the Jaguars. Ben had a lot of room in front of him and a late flag coming as well. Yeah, he tripped over his own lineman on the outside and he tripped and then all of a sudden a McNeese player uh, dove in to, uh, to make the tackle after the they call him for a late hit on ground probably. And it's worth it out. If they uphold the penalty, it'll be an automatic first down, obviously, for the Jaguars. Let's see what Christian Wills tells. And they will call the personal foul on Nice. First down at the 36. Cheney, tailback. He'll get the call and stacked up, thrown back. Cody Fulton, the middle linebacker right there. Boy, nice job, middle linebacker, just running through the gap, reading it, seeing the hole, and almost hitting it like a running back. He hit it to that linebacker and filled it in the back of the two-yard box. The hole up almost like a running back, and he filled himself. Meets him in the back. Of the with Fulton stopped. Transfers beat 
Washington Redskins. 102 tackles, 11 sacks. One was cut just earlier today by the Washington Redskins. And their final team cuts. McDaniel finds his man. That's Giants. Look third out of here. Far side by Bedford. Yeah, uh, stepping up into the pocket, but not looking to run. Stepping up into the field, not looking to rope. Last Southern touchdown, and their last score overall came with 14.52 to go in the second. Third down, one from the 45. Now, let's run together. Yeah, big play in the game right here, third down and one, especially after giving a turnover up and uh, going down 24 to 14. Dawson Odoms and his staff will talk things over. dancing are just okay get a better than just okay unlimited plan with spotify premium included on america's best net only from att more for yours that's right rookie Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. Okay, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear of blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. UFC 242. Buy it on ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Third and one Southern from their own 45. Second effort might be enough. He's going to be down the first down marker. Yeah, the official on the far side of the field, forward progress, gets him right at the line. I think it's going to be uh, oh, yeah, this a little short. The official on the side. So he's oh, so for sound for the Cowboys. Yard weak side linebacker. First down marker was right at the six. And the forward progress might be enough. They have not marked the ball down yet. But the line judges, right foot, just shy of the 46. I think it may be about a foot short stand. Yeah, I think from the side of the field, ran out and had it short. The official on the other side had a snow when the, they threw the ball to the official on this side and he marked it short. They'll come into measure while the Cowboy training staff tends to Darius Daniels. by not even a foot. Now, down 10. You haven't scored since the first play of the second quarter, but you're in your own territory. What does Dawson Odoms decide to do here? Oh, he's going to go for it. He has to. And the only thing I wonder is, though, with 6'2", 215-pound quarterback, do you put Skelton back over town? Yeah, Daniels at 6'2", 190. We're going to let Daniels finish this game. So good to see Darius Daniels. Water the thunder. And an office on. They'll bring in Ben. Darting Hill. He'll be upset with Mitchell. Down. Pull down. Ben, second effort should be enough. We oh, see he was on top of one of his teammates and then lunged forward. I think they're going to give it to him. Yeah, I think it's going to be right on the line. I think it'll be first down. The first down marker is right at the yep. 46. Yep. On the back end of the football is ahead. So Dawson Odom's gamble pays off. Oh. Sideline warning by the coaches on okay. the sideline. She came back to the sideline. To <laughs> they can do that. Sideline warning again. So a warning against McNeese, and 
First down coming for Southern. A Southern offense that averaged 28 points a game last season. They just committed 15 turnovers the whole year. They have three tonight leading one points. McDaniel pressured. Wings has him down. There's his first sack of the season. 21 and a half now. And they had Bedford run down, side, uh, down the middle, but just couldn't get there because of the backfield to get him before he could get it off. Nine and a half sacks away from uh, ultimately here at Magnet. And he's just one away from becoming the second leading sacker all time here, or at least tying the man who's right now number two, Kavika Pittman. Quite an NFL career. Played here in Magnese from 93 to 95. And if the play clock now gets down to zero, did Southern call timeout? They did not. A delay a game call. Magnese was showing a corner blitz from the boundary on that side, and the quarterback, McDaniels, wasn't sure what to do, and the play clock ran out. So now second down, 15. They haven't taken a deep shot in quite some time. McDaniel able to find his man amongst heavy pressure. Jeremiah Houston, the tight end. Flag down, however, right around where McDaniel threw that pass. This may be coming back. Holding Southern. A nice job by McDaniel stepping up, still keeping his eyes downfield and seeing people. Earlier, Skelton would scramble when he was scrambling to run. McDaniels was scrambling to throw. So the flag thrown just before the strike to Houston. Instead, the ball moved back to the 31 in Southern Territory, the first down marker of the Cowboy 44. Second 25. And some confusion personnel wise defensive for McDermott timeout. Yeah, their coaches are out on the field. They're, they're fixing it. They already got one warning. We'll take it with them. The head coaching debut of Sterling Gilbert. His team up 10. Dawson Odoms has seen his team hurt themselves not just with the three turnovers, but on the lone Stan Humphreys, multiple penalties. Second and 25 coming, six minutes to go. Glenda McDaniel continues his first drive of the game at quarterback for Southern. Blitz. Lofting it, looking for Cameron Mackey, and incomplete. Oh, no. Flag down late. There was a bit of jostling between Mackey and the safety Andre Sam. And so Southern may get out of second and 25 with an automatic first down. McDaniels basically just throwing that up, hoping for his guy. That's it, or a pass on your second and 30 or whatever it was. All of a sudden, you got a first and 10. Hey, even though it's just a 15-yard penalty, and there was second and 25, an automatic first down. Chris Livings and his McNeese defense have to do some more work here. Ben, a tailback. Ben gets the call, trying to cut it inside. Good job staying on his feet and able to get a couple. Cordell Williams was among the Cowboys. On the base, Karen Crows had quite a game at same linebacker. It's a nice job of just holding that the offensive line until his support can get there from behind and make the play for a few games. Southern next week will head to Memphis for its one cent in Thomas State. Going deep and looking for Mister in the air as well. And 
Fortunately, Register is okay, had his helmet knocked off. The register is slow to get up, as you see. Yeah, Register's helmet came off, so he's got to leave for one play. And here on third down and eight, that's a big uh, weapon to leave the game. Low snap, picked up without his knee on the ground, but still no chance. Has been run down. Cameron Peterson, the sophomore from Houston, on the tackle, and it's fourth down. Yeah, Brinson, the center there for Southern, is trying to make a call up front-wise to help his lineman know who to block, and the quarterback's calling for the snap. He snaps it, and it really wasn't red. Quarterback drops the ball, and then all of a sudden, Ben tries to pick it up and get anything out of it. Which run seemed like it took <laughs> yet. Southern still at its own 45. Away. Sutton calls fair catch and makes it just ahead of the 15. Tune in to Arc's game day on CST for the best Razorbacks football pregame coverage. Let's go Ken Hamlin, Clint Stern, and Quinn Ruby next Saturday at 12 o'clock Central for the Razorbacks matchup against Ole Miss. CST is your home for Gulf South Sports. David Solzman, Stan Humphreys, Carly McCord with you. We talked so much about the offense here at McNeese, but Sterling Gilbert, now the head coach, how about the job of this McNeese defense holding Southern without a point since the first play of the second quarter? Yeah, some good sec uh, uh, halftime adjustments by that coaching staff to relay that to their their defensive uh, uh, group to come back out here and to execute that uh, adjustments that they've made. Jacoby Skinner had McNeese's first touchdown of the night. Gains five on first down. Orger on keeping it. Caleb Carter there on the stop. Third and three coming. He can for Sean Gilder. We'll see his offense convert third in here. Yeah, third down three in your, you know, 22, 23 yard line to move the chains to get some more downs here to give your defense a rest. Uh, big Southern probably going to be bringing pressure here uh, to stop them. They'll hand it off on third and three, and no chance. Skinner goes down for a loss. Yeah, Southern just had everybody up at the line of scrimmage, basically corners playing man-to-man -man and just bringing the house, trying to stop the run, not allowing them, making McNeese punt the ball. Okay, yeah, number seven again. One of the Jaguars there, Jordan Lewis as well, the all-conference defensive end. So a quick three and out. Where win. Big shoes to fill, replacing Alex. 44 yards a punt last season for McNeese. 21 punts going 50 yards or more. Good one here, is best of the night. Fumbled. Looks like McNeese has it. Another Southern turnover. They're fourth. Wow, another mother for McNeese. Uh, Job to get on field, but a horrible job there for Southern just catching the ball. It was a great punt, just dropped, and good job of getting downfield and coverage to make that play for the fourth turnover tonight. And Kalem Foster has recovered both special teams fumbles for Southern here tonight. So we'll say it again. All three McNeese touchdowns coming off of turnovers. They get a chance to make it four here. Ball just ahead of the Southern 25. This is to Matt Keller, who's going to throw in the zone. Keller, the backup quarterback, junior from Harvey, who is looking for DeAndre Hitlock on the field. Lineman downfield. You're going to have lineman downfield here. The, you know, coach is pulling out the trick plays here, trying to excite the, uh, the fans here at McNeese. Uh, coach Gilbert is, but uh, looks like they had lineman downfield. The Cowboys will repeat for down. Sterling Gilbert 
Offensive coordinator at something the last year. They just mm-hmm. went seven and six last year, lost their last six. Can't blame for 31 and a half points a game. Two seasons ago with great Montreal Flowers battles, 10 and two, over 38 points a contest. Bringing in that exciting offensive attack here to Lake Charles. Bergeron with time. And now has to throw it away. Good cover deal. Again, just feeling pressure from up inside. And, you know, six standing back there with the defensive line rushing. When it gets home, he loses a little bit. And he wants to use his athletic ability to get outside. And uh, Southern's doing a nice job of keeping him contained inside the pocket, making him throw it away. On seven season opening home game. Hold on here for number eight in a row. Straight draw. Orson slips a tackle. Quarterback run all the way, and it makes it third and manageable. Gain of about eight to get them back to third and ten. Maybe, you know, you get in, you get have it. Maybe give your foot kicker a shot and a fourth down. There's one reason why throwing Berlick's to your front quarterback because it's like. Yeah, and I think he's made some good decisions tonight for a guy that. You know, he started three games last year. He played in all 11, but he started three. He's made some good decisions. I think he'll feel more comfortable as the year goes along to staying in that pocket a little longer. Finished fourth in the Cowboys in rushing last year. To the end zone. Tipped up in the air. Almost intercepted. It was intended for Dre Sean Hudson. And one heck of a defensive play downfield by Dontel Brunfield. Hudson had him beat, a little underthrown, just a little under. He's got him beat right now. If he puts it outside, you see him stop and have to go back. Allows the defensive back to come in and make a play. Almost uh, tips it up for an interception. They're going to try the field goal. Uh, Magnese is. It will be from 41. Not much win to speak of. A 41-yarder for Noah Anderson. He hit earlier today from 37 and barely had that distance. This one trying to get there again, but wide right. So Southern holds. That's a 10-point Magnese lead. Well, next Saturday, the LSU Tigers will take on the Texas Longhorns. Big game in Austin. CST as your pregame and postgame coverage. Victor Howell, Jordy Rush, Jacob Hester, Eric Alexander, Emily Dixon, and Ronnie Rance will be with you. Catch LSU game day at 11 a.m. And then LSU tonight kicks off right after the game. Both shows live only on Cox Sports Television. Talk about an atmosphere here in Lake Charles. Sold out crowd. It'll be an atmosphere they've had in Austin, but that they haven't had in Austin in quite some time when Ed Orgeron's LSU Tigers come to the capital of Texas. Some trickery here for Southern. Deep pass and double coverage. Catch made as Bedford took a lick. Brandon Hinton with the pass. There's a flag down to the field. And this may be an ineligible man downfield on Southern. It is. It's an eligible man downfield. They ran a little reverse pass here. The ball was underthrown. He goes up and makes a great play, but it's coming back. And that would have been easily Southern's biggest play of the second half. Instead, all for naught. How about the lick Bedford takes here? Javon Burris providing the contact. And pressure by Cordell Williams on the throw. Those linemen, they want to they wanna get on downfield early. And, boy, you have a play like that, you hate that. But And nowadays, it's kind of an official judgment call sometimes. They give them three to four yards sometimes downfield. First and 15, Christopher Cheney, one of his better games of the night, about six yards. One of two SWAC teams that Magnese will face this season. Alcorn State will be here in a couple of weeks. Cowboys pick to finish sixth in the Southland this season after a six and five campaign in 2018.
scrambling. McDaniel. Oh, oh that's a face mask. For sure. Flag goes down. In fact, three of them, but all for the same call. Marvel Bourgeois knows that he got the wrong part of the helmet. Yeah, scrambling there by McDaniel trying to make something happen. Uh, 15 yards. It's been their biggest plays. The second half Southern has been the penalty. The 15 yarders here uh, towards the end of the third quarter with four seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Four seconds remain in the third quarter. A Southern team down 10. As we see the penalty again. And no doubt. Goodness. Pulling McDaniel's head around. So the ball now at the 44 as the clock will wind down in the third quarter. In all of 2018, Southern scored 14 fourth quarter points. They need 10 in the fourth here tonight to have any chance. Fun season opener in Lake Charles so far. And by Geico. Well, Louisiana Saturday night at Lake Charles. David Salzman, Stan Humphreys, Carly McCord with you. 24-14 as the McNeese lead as the fourth quarter is underway. Glendon McDaniel scrambling on first down and with room to run in the Cowboy territory. That hit was inbound, so no flag, but enough for the first down on the run by the sophomore. Yeah, nice job scrambling there for uh, McDaniel to get a first down. You know, that third quarter, Southern only had 24 total offensive yards. The... Uh, the third quarter, and uh, McNeese had 65 yards of just penalties in the third quarter. For the game, 12 penalties, 130 yards for McNeese. And we just started the fourth. So McDaniel, his second drive at quarterback, replacing Ladarius Skelton, who turned the ball over twice tonight here in Lake Charles. Swinging it out. This is Craig Nelson, the sophomore. Nice job getting out of bounds around the 40. Dawson Odom says Nelson had a great camp, part of the depth of this running back core for Southern. Nice play there by uh, uh, Peterson uh, there for McNeese, trying to get out wide to run down the running back. Had him in the backfield, just could not bring him down. You saw Living's winded on the sideline here on the second and sixth play. Both teams under 200 yards of offense. McNeese with 167. Southern threw three quarters at 185. Good job. No. Register came back for the football, but unable to haul it in. What's amazing to me is the the lack of yardage but the amount of plays you know you're up into the the 60 plays for Magnus and the 50 plays for Southern but the lack of yardage so everything's quick and then uh, early in the game everything was deep for Southern in the big plays. Southern two of six on third play clock down to seven confusion for Southern offensively A handoff, and Nelson, did he lose the football? McNeese thinks they have their fifth takeaway. They do. Five Southern turnovers. The biggest story in this one, Stan. Yeah, Cameron Peterson there with the turnover recovery. Ball comes out, goes down and gets it. McNeese showed a full all-out blitz, and uh, Southern looks to the sidelines. Uh, McDaniel looks to the sidelines. They changed it, trying to wash everybody down and hand it up on the inside. McNeese checks out of it, ends up having a guy run free and make a uh, make a play for a turnover. So Sterling Gilbert has seen his defense with his new defensive coordinator, Jim Gush. Continue to keep Southern off the board. We repeat Southern's last points. The first play into the second quarter. Give him a 14-7 lead. And that Cody Orgeron of the offense looking to use some clock and perhaps. They huddled, huddled here. This <laughs> ought to be something, maybe a special play, you think? 
No. No, uh, Pratt. You would, you would think if they huddled up that there's something, there's a long call here, a long play, maybe even a trick play. Well, they're not going to huddle here. <laughs> and a three for Pratt. Still too early in the fourth for the Cowboys to take their time. Cody Orgeron, 12 of 18 passing, 111 yards. Will throw here, and a nice catch, but out of bounds. A beautiful catch made. Couldn't get a foot in bounds, however. Rashid Bonnet, it's one of the transfers we talked about for McNeese. A grad transfer from Louisiana Tech, who was honorable mention Conference USA a couple of seasons ago. That's 74 catches in his Bulldog career. Now third down. Southern just brings three. Orgeron for Sutton. Catch made. First down. Southern only rushing three, dropping eight. Orgeron stepped up in the pocket, gets outside, and finds the receiver down the boundary. They're trying to hurry and hurry and go here. Whistles blow. It's one of the Southern players lost a shoe. And this will allow Southern now to substitute as we see the throw again from Cody Berger Orgeron. Take up a grab by the junior from New Orleans. Kyron Sutton had 41 catches last season, 609 yards, which was 31% of the team's receiving yards the entire year. The Sutton has gotten help. Trevor Beggy, two big touchdown grabs for the Cowboys so far tonight. The shoes are on and we're ready. Pratt squeezing through. His biggest run of the night, past the 15. Nice job by the offensive line up front from McNeese. Just the old counter play, pulling the guard around, kicking out the end, starting to wear down the defensive lineman of Southern. Quickly to the line again, ball of the 12. Davion Curtis, the Texas transfer. Couple of yards. Played last year at Tyler Junior College. Just played one game in Austin a couple of seasons ago for the Longhorns. And the player down now for Southern as the clock will stop. It's typical muggy late August Louisiana Saturday night. All of a sudden, getting up and running off the field is to Gerald Brunfield. Yeah, he just fell to the ground to stop the clock, and then he got up and ran off after they stopped the clock. Now the clock begins to run again as we approach 12 minutes to go in the fourth. Senior Pratt remains in the backfield. We'll get the call. Nothing doing this time. Southern just selling out, putting all eight, nine guys up at the line of scrimmage and uh, playing man-to-man -man with the corners to stop the running game right now. They've got to stop them and hold them getting in the end zone here. Jacoby Papillon. There he is on the stop. Played his high school ball here in Lake Charles at Barb. Southern 7-4 and four last season. And there's first in the SWAC West Division, and they expect to again get to the SWAC title game. Third and long. Argeron scrambles and just got a yard. Capo's going to send out their field goal unit again. Again, Orgeron, just one quick look. He looked like he was going to throw it, and he just pulls it down and tries to find a hole. If he can sit there just a little longer to give his receivers just a little bit more of a chance to uh, to pull away from a DB. But to me, in that situation, 24-14, 11 minutes, ball on this end, I don't see anything wrong with that because you're just basically not taking a loss trying to get positive yardage for your field goal kicker. Well, the key for him, he has a couple of touchdown passes to Beggy, but no interceptions. Cowboys are looking to put 
24 points on the board off turnovers. And Noah Anderson takes the field goal through. 20 unanswered since early second quarter for the Cowboys. A 27-14 McNeese lead. Plenty to cheer about for McNeese and the 2019 opener, a 27-14 lead over Southern. Well, tune in Friday nights for live high school football coverage right here on CST. Next Friday, the Westgate Tigers take on the Lafayette Christian Knights, and that's at 7 o'clock. Log on to CoxSportsTV.com for the full schedule, which includes a new game every Friday leading up to the LHSAA Prep Classic in December. David Salzman, Stan Humphreys, Carly McCord with you. Two deep touchdown passes for Southern in the first half. They led 14-7 early second quarter. Could not have predicted that they would be off the scoreboard since. Still a two-score game, 10.38 to go, and they'll have the ball of the 25. So we've seen two quarterbacks in for Southern. Ladarius Skelton went five of nine. Passing two touchdowns, but fumbled twice. Glendon McDaniel has replaced him, and as you see, remains in the game. This will be his third drive. Southern will head to Memphis, take on the Tigers. Next Saturday, McNeese will be in Stillwater for the Battle of the Pokes. McNeese and Oklahoma State. McDaniel as the receiver. Did he slip or was tripped up? No flag. They got their feet just tangled up. McNeese showing a little bit of a zone blitz. Brent showing like they were going to bring six. Ended up dropping two defensive ends out. And got a little pressure on him on the inside. McDaniel's laying it up. And uh, just the receiver and the defensive back just got their feet tangled. What's been the change? Because we talked about the deep passing working for Southern in the first half. They have not had that success at all in half number two. Well, they haven't been able to run the ball as well the second half. Uh, the turnovers have, have slowed down their momentum, the penalties. Uh, and when you can't run the ball as well, now they can keep, Magnese can keep their safeties back and helping the deep coverage. On the slant, nice grab. It'll set up third and short. That's Cameron Mackey, the junior from Ocala, Florida. Yeah, Southern, they've punted twice. They've turned the ball over five times. And McDaniel, I tell you, he's got a nice arm. He makes some nice throws. Uh, Southern's got two quarterbacks that can play. And uh, if they can run the football as well as they did the first half, they just don't turn it over. Uh, they're, a, they're a powerful offense. Skelton no more for his legs. A decent thrower, but I think it make a good point, McDaniel. A better throw with a better arm. Living's the blitz. McDaniel has to heave it, and it's through Register's hands. He was open as he got past the McNeese defense. Instead, fourth down. Yeah, basically, McNeese comes with the blitz. Southern uh, can't pick up one coming off the left end. McDaniels does a great job of moving, knowing that we can't pick him up. Move to his right a little bit, put, some ball, put the air under the ball, and threw a great ball out there to Register and just right through his hands. Wow, one the young man certainly wishes he could have back. Well, this receiving core is going to make hay in the swag. And that is for sure. Register, Mackey, TJ Bedford. And on and on. Dawson Odom's team is going to be one of the best in the swag, you'd think, in 2019 if they stay healthy. Play clock down to zero and a delay a game call. Delay a game call. So, we're mentioning again, this is just the third punt for Cesar Baraja, a junior from Arcadia, Florida. Five turnovers will do that to you. Yeah, and the turnovers are in the kicking game. That's the biggest field ch changing part of the game, and that's where you don't have to move the ball very far when you turn it over. What a great kick. Sending Sutton back. He'll try to make something out of this, and Southern is right there. Good job by Sutton staying on his feet, but marked down shy of the 25. Well, you think if a team would commit five turnovers, it wouldn't be Southern, one of the more experienced teams in the state of Louisiana, but that's what they've done so far. Oh, 
Wow, they have entertained us all night. The Human Jukebox, the Southern Band. This is hard to believe. You know, these campuses are just 150 miles apart. It's the first time Cowboy fans have ever seen the Southern Band here. It's the first time Southern has ever played here. They were supposed to come in 2005. That game canceled because of Hurricane Katrina. But I was surprised to see this is just the second ever matchup between Southern and McNeese. And I heard, I was listening earlier, they're, they're playing this year in the, uh, the Rose Bowl Parade. Mm -hmm. They've entertained at six Super Bowls, 130,000 Facebook followers, 50,000 Instagram followers. Talking about the band, but what a band they are. It's the Andre Hicks with the first down grab. Gets about five. I imagine they'll be welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Get the 80s together, make it happen. A 27-14 McNeese lead. 20 unanswered for the Cowboys since early second quarter. Big burst of speed, hicks up the middle. This is what you talked about, Stan. You run so many plays. It's a human night, of course, as it usually is here in late August. And maybe they can tire out of defense. Yeah, and they get a great double team up inside by the right guard and the right tackle that are there from McNeese. And they're back to the line of scrimmage again, ready to go. Orgeron with a flag down. Perhaps a free play. He'll bullet it up the middle, but his intended target hadn't looked back in time. Nate Briscoe. See, this is offsides on Southern. That's about the most Cody Orgeron has showed off his arm strength tonight. Yeah. Uh, illegal motion there for Magnese. Again, trying to go so fast that you're actually hurting yourself more than helping helping yourself against the defense. So now back him up, be first and 15. As a former quarterback and coach, you have to know how hard it is. You try to simulate everything you can do in practice, but so different when you're on the actual stage of a game. Yeah, you get out here and you get that play clock going and you get – in the situations you get a defense that shows you a different look and you have to change and the play clock's going down it, it, it takes some time to get used to that 13th cowboy penalty Orgeron scrambles and a first down run for the junior quarterback nicely done out of bounds just shy of the southern 40. That was a nice job there by Cody because he actually sat in the pocket a little bit longer a little bit longer and gave it a chance to happen and then got out and made a nice uh, nice athletic run to get the ball upfield and get out of bounds without taking a hit. The clock in McNeese's favor. Elijah Mack, same play just a couple of plays ago where DeAndre Hicks had his big game. Here's Mack, the South Florida transfer, who played for Still and Gilbert last year, getting first down yardage and a Southern player down. Again, another Southern player down, just to me, starting to wear that defensive front of Southerns down. Uh, McNeese running the counter, pulling the guard, kicking the end out, pulling the tackle, turning up on the inside linebacker, and really hitting it downhill, straight downhill, right up the middle. It's Benjamin Harris, the Rover, senior from Peoria, Illinois, being tended to. And he was in on that tackle of... Elijah Mack and took the brunt of it. 8.25 to go, fourth quarter, a 27-14 McNeese lead. Cowboys looking to go 13-0 all time against SWAC opponents. And if they can hold on here, they'll try to go 14-0 in a couple of weeks when Alcorn State comes to town. There's Mack, 6 feet 207. He actually looks bigger than that, the junior. He and DeAndre Hicks, high school classmates in Pentagorda, Florida. Ball of the 29. Orgeron trying to cut it to the outside. Oh, good, uh, <laughs> good job kind of getting to the ground because bearing down on him was O.J. Tucker. Orgeron gains a yard. Yeah, you better get to the ground, not take that lick. Uh, they run the exact same play they just ran in the play before, uh, but Orgeron is reading Orgeron is reading the defensive end. The defensive end goes down and takes the running back. He pulls it, but there's an outside uh, safety sitting there waiting for him. But uh, he gets down not to take that full, uh, full hit. He's a story of persistence. 
Didn't even play football when he began high school because he was just 5'6", played tennis, won a state title. Six-string walk-on quarterback when he arrived here on campus. And now the starter hoping to lead his team to a season-opening victory in 2019. A good eight-yard run there by number eight. Yeah, just a straight quarterback draw there to run. Uh, you know, you're up 27-14, seven minutes left to go in the game. It's still, you know, a two-score game, but, boy, you hate to see him taking all those hits. He won't take one here. Mack pushing the pile forward, and that's enough for the first. Bergeron's going to come out. You, you see him looking at his right hand. He'll be tended to in the sideline. Matt Keller, the junior from Harvey, is going to come in to replace him. He's got his hand. You know, you, you start running that ball and taking all those hits. And so Keller the handoff to Mack. Keller did not attempt a pass in 2018, appeared in two games. Also appeared in two games in 2017. Keller was the offensive MVP at Archbishop Shaw back in 2015. Player down for the Cowboys. Clock a stop with 6.32 to go. And good news, Ergeron's already back and wanting to get back into the field, although they've wrapped his right wrist. Let's see if he comes out on the Cowboys' next play. Well, what a start for the Southland Conference this season. Central Arkansas going on the road, defeating Western Kentucky. Southeastern Louisiana dominating the number six ranked team in the FCS, Jacksonville State, on Thursday. And McNeese looking for a season opening win here against an awfully good Southern team. Let's go down to the field and Carly McCord. That's right, guys. Well, both of these coaches were super excited about playing this in-state game. And Coach Odoms was saying earlier this week that really the main reason was because of recruiting purposes. He says that it goes to show how you can really set your program apart and go out and, out and play outside of your conference and measure yourself differently. He said that it was going to be a real challenge for his program to face a different style of football and obviously a different conference. So super excited for these two programs to get together tonight, obviously with a packed crowd as well, guys. Thank you, Carl. It's been a great atmosphere. Again, I'm, I'm surprised it's just the second time they've ever played. I hope they do this more often. By the way, Jamarcus Bolding, the left tackle, cramped up. Came off the field on his own power. Keller, a quarterback. A wait second down. 70th play for McNeese here tonight. Keller scrambling. And he might get a couple Keller thrown back. A couple yards to the 12-yard line. Third down for 25. You know, the thing about it, you had talked about it earlier. You know, Magnese has picked sixth in the Southland Conference. So, you know, they're, uh, after the last couple of years not getting to the playoffs, excited about what um, Coach Gilbert brings in here and trying to get back into that playoff hunt. That's what they're used to here. They've had quite a tradition making the, what was back then, Division One AA title game in 1997 and 2002. Lost both. They made the playoff 16 times. Mack, he loves taking a leg, doesn't he? First and goal. Lowers his head and gets that extra yard when it's not there. Quickly to the line. McNeese trying to put this game away with 5.30 to go. Touchdown. Flag is down, however. Mack. With the touchdown, if this play is upheld. I think it's going to be offsides on uh, on Southern. It is, and the touchdown will stand. So Mack, his first touchdown in a McNeese uniform. 26 on answer for the Cowboys going back to the first play of the second quarter. Again, just the tempo, the tempo there. They ran that play. Mack was able to get six, seven, eight yards, and then all of a sudden back to the line of scrimmage as quick as you can go, ran the exact same play and get him into the end zone. I'm a little surprised by this score, though neither of us expected Southern to commit five turnovers. What a job of the McNeese defense after falling behind 14-7 early second quarter. Noah Anderson, the PAT. McNeese. 
about to win its eighth consecutive season opening home game. A 20 point edge on Southern. Southern can pull off quite a comeback. Sterling Gilbert's going to win his head coaching debut here in Lake Charles. I know there'll be excitement among Sterling Gilbert and the coaching staff. How much of a relief, though, to get through your first game with a likely victory? Well, it's it's going through all of those uh, fall and spring practices all summer long. The expectation that everyone here in Lake Charles and McNeese had for bringing Coach Gilbert in here and then to put up 34 points on the board with five minutes to go and to, and to get a victory um, he'll sleep well tonight, but he'll be up early tomorrow to get ready for the next <laughs> one. Folks at Oklahoma State next Saturday. So this is the wrist and hand of Cody Orgeron. They put tape on it the last drive, and now they will ice it up, and obviously we will not see Orgeron for the remainder of this game. Yeah, that's, you know. That's one of those deals where you're a quarterback and you're running with the football a lot. You've got the hand over the ball and the helmet hits the hand a lot. Uh, there's a lot of broken bones that happen in, a, in situations like that a lot in that quarterback position. Let's hope he'll be okay. An impressive season opener. Showed some of those first game jitters, but no turnovers. Helping the Cowboys to a 20 point lead. Southern will keep it to the ground on first down. That's Cheney and a short game. I want to go back to Sterling Gilbert and just the fact that he's here. That's quite a commitment by the administration here to do what they had to do to get someone of Sterling Gilbert's caliber. He was offensive coordinator at South Florida, Texas. Great success at Tulsa. He's had great success wherever he's been. He's just an example of so many Southland Conference schools that are doing even more and more of what it takes to try to be competitive, not just in the league, but they at the FCS level. I think Nichols is a great example. What Tim Rebo has done, they're almost unanimous picks to win the Southland again this season. He had some lucrative offers to leave Thibodeau, and yet Nichols did what they had to do to keep Tim Rebo on the Nichols campus. That's something that would never have happened five, ten years ago. And Nichols and McNeese, just a couple of examples of so many Southland schools that have stepped up their efforts. There's a couple of flags here. A little yeah. extracurricular activity, and Sterling Gilbert is going to make sure that no more of his players get involved. But you've also got to think of um, the coach that had that opportunity, a Tim Rebo. You know, he's from that area. Right. That's home to him. That's home to his family. You know, sometimes it becomes more of a home comfort zone more than it is about the money. And... Uh, you know, I think Coach Gilbert, he had been at Texas. He had been at all the big schools. He wanted his shot as being a head coach and to start at a program that has had a lot of success in the past in McNeese uh, was probably exciting to him to come in here and, and, and it to be all about trying to build it back to where it used to be. Person, a foul call on McNeese. You can see how upset Sterling Gilbert is. Yeah, no doubt. You know, they're used to winning here. And it's become a little more of a struggle just because the depth of the league has become so much better. Man, Eric Morris, what a job he did at UIW. His first year winning a conference title. And UIW was able to bring him in from Texas Tech. So similar to what McNeese has done, bringing Sterling Gilbert in. A little too much extracurricular activity now. Another flag down as Cameron Mackey was knocked out. At this point, Magnese is approaching 200 penalty yards. They just can't have that. Back to back personal fouls now. Being thrown down by Darius Daniels out of bounds. On the ball all the way to the Magnese 35. McDaniel, flushed out of the pocket, finds his man. That's Mackey, a first down in the red zone. Again, that's the difference to me from McDaniel uh, and earlier with Shelton. McDaniel is scrambling to throw 
Shelton was scrambling to run. And right now he's keeping his eyes downfield and finding the open receiver. Southern looking for its first points of the second half. Under four minutes to go in the fourth. Stepping up and now flushed out of the pocket. Almost intercepted. Wait, was the catch made instead? What's the call? The register came up with the catch somehow. It was on the far side from us. But you see the official's flag down. Register might have stepped out of bounds first. They, the official threw his hat down saying that the receiver stepped out of bounds and then came back in was the first to touch. Now, if he's forced out, and as long as he established himself back, he's okay. So that's what they're probably discussing now. Was he forced or did he go out on his own? I mean, the coverage was tremendous downfield. And somehow, Register at 6-5 came away with the football. Our crew's still talking about too it. Too long, too long of a discussion for this. He's either out, he's in, whatever. Well, the side judge, Henry Howard, was the one that threw his hat down. Let's see, a referee, Christian Watson, amongst the team meeting. And now we'll get the call. Uh -huh. Touchdown. What a play, Hunter Register. His second touchdown grab of the night. And the Jaguars within 14. Barely got that first foot in. And he did establish himself, as you said, as the throw came to the end zone. Right. Martel Fontenot kicks the PAT through, and it's 34-21. This is an awfully good receiving core, and you mentioned already a quarterback in Glendon McDaniel who it looks like can better get the football to these receivers. What a grab as he took it away from Callum Foster. Yeah, what a great grab there. I'm not sure if the first foot was out right there. Then he didn't have control. Then he had his feet in bounds. Then he had control. Register, two touchdowns tonight. Had one all of last season as he battled injuries. Between him and T.J. Bedford and Cameron Mackey, add Dalen Richardson to the list. This receiving core can stay healthy. It's going to be a hard out in the swag for Southern. Just, yeah, to cut down on the turnovers. You know, the five turnovers, uh, you cut down on that, and this this ball game was in a one-score game. Five turnovers have led to 24 Magnese points. Well, the fans still having a good time as the human jukebox is still here, the Southern Band. I've never had such a hard time parking here, and we get here two hours before the game. Magnese, their fans already in mass tailgating like they normally do, but a lot of fans wearing those SU shirts were having fun by the time we arrived here today. Yeah, great support there for Southern University. They travel well, bring a lot of fans, and then they brought the band tonight, so everybody wanted to see it. Onside kick coming, and it's Beggy able to hold on to the football. Should have been a penalty there because really when the ball was kicked, Beggy went inside of 10 yards to catch it and got hit inside of 10 yards. So if he would have fumbled it, should have been Magnese's ball. Now mark him down to the Southern 46 and Cowboys will hope to run out the clock here. 340 remaining, both teams two timeouts left. Cowboys will take it first and 10 45. One of the first thoughts is looking at Cody Orgeron's health. Of course, learn more about that as we saw a few minutes ago his right wrist wrapped in ice. 
Sterling Gilbert, hoping that his team can wind out the last 340 here. Mack on the carry. Keller remains in a quarterback. Dade Diedrich in at receiver. You see him wearing number nine as for the first time in quite a while. Magnese is not going to rush to make the next snap. They still have about 15 seconds to go in the play clock. <laughs> Up the middle again, Mack, and it'll be third and four. Well, Elijah Mack really runs hard downhill. You know, he hits the hole. There's not one there. He's going to try to make one, but really for his size, and uh, he'll be that big back that just hits it downhill for uh, for McNeese. Southern calls timeout now. They stop the clock with 2.48 to go. Well, don't miss the 2020 NCAA FCS Championship be here before you know it. I know the season's just started, but Saturday, January 11th, mark your calendar and the game again at beautiful Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas. For tickets, visit NCAA.com slash FCS. Dawson Odom's eighth season as head coach of Southern. He's already with the third longest tenure in Southern history. Jaguars won a SWAC title in 2013 under Odin's watch and SWAC Western Division champs not just last year but also in 2014. Keller to pass. That's his first pass as a McNeese Cowboy. Junior from Harvey. Able of just a loss of a yard but able to get his first completion and that's the Jacob Logan, the junior from Deer Park, Texas. Trying to find something safe then for Keller to throw there late in the ball game. Trying to move the chains. Southern calls another timeout to make it fourth down and two. Well, I like it. Not giving the game away yet. They'll get the ball back. 2.36 to go. Now the ball is inside the Southern 40. Let's see if Sterling Gilbert decides to try to pin Southern deep. And Bailey Rayborn is out on the field right now. Let's go to our Southland Strong player of the game. You force five turnovers, that helps. But what a steady performance by Cody Orgeron and his first start of the year. Yeah, you know, great leadership like you talked about earlier. No, turno no turnover, but also made some good throws early in the game in the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. A couple of plays late in the game with his legs uh, to extend the play to get a first down, as you see right there. Uh, just a great overall game from a guy that was a walk-on a few years ago here at Magnese and got that opportunity now with the new staff to take over and be that leader on offense. Now, I hope he's all right with that right wrist in ice or was in ice. Looks okay there on the sideline. Magnese will punt. Cowboys back there. Beautifully done. Out of bounds at the one. Southern needs two touchdowns, and on this drive, they'll need 99 yards. First down, Southern. Well, this is a uh, copyrighted telecast of Southland Conference football. May not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of Cox Sports Television. David Salzman, Stan Humphreys, Carly McCord with you on a Louisiana Saturday night. Southern looking for a miracle here. 99 yards for what needs to be the first of two touchdowns for them to have any chance here. From the one. Looking to throw from the end zone and going deep for register, but out of his reach, he did get the step on his defender and Darian Dunn. Boy, register, he really looks good to get out and run and get. He's run a lot of deep patterns tonight. Uh, 
Uh, but just a little off on the inside there by McDaniel to a little more air on it so he can run under it because he was out in front again. Is the prevent defense no longer in vogue at all? <laughs> I don't <laughs> guess. I was surprised to see register so open. Yeah. Second and ten. Smack down just shy of the 10. That's Darby on profit, junior from Baton Rouge. And the man making the hit is still down. Darian Dunn down mm. for uh, for Magnese making the stop. That's the other thing you hate late in the game. Two minutes left, up 13 for some of your starters that are out there trying to finish this game off to get that victory uh, to go down with an injury. And you'll see him right here make the hit. Gets bent back. It's a secondary with Dunn and Colby Burton starting. Dunn a couple of interceptions last season. But not a lot of depth at the cornerback position. So they tend to Dunn. Let's hope this isn't as bad as it looks right now. 2.13 to go. A 34-21 Magnese lead. Overall, if you're the Cowboys, you force five turnovers. It's not going to happen every week. What's the biggest improvement they need to make going week one to week two? Penalties. You know, when you're up in the 13, 14, 15 penalties for as many yards, uh, you play good football teams, uh, you will not come out on top uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that'll be a huge improvement. The, uh, the next thing that uh, uh, Coach Gilbert will talk about would be uh, just the – uh, calling plays, getting them in, get it quick, uh, get set quicker as the offensive line, the wide receivers, uh, too many penalties as far as illegal formations, movement, things like that case. Uh, you'll get better in the second week because of that. Well, they can't afford to have near the 15 penalties that they have any chance at what would be a major upset at Oklahoma State next week. You see Sterling Gilbert coming out to see how his corner dearie and Dunn is. And let's hope Dunn can somehow walk out the field on his own power here, but that's not going to be the case. So it looked to be a knee injury, and well, they're going to slowly take Dunn off the field. He's a good one, and if he's out, let's hope he's not out for too long this year. Packed house, sold out Cowboy Stadium tonight. For this first ever matchup here in Lake Charles between Southern and McNeese. Second overall, the first one taking place in Baton Rouge in 2004. A good weekend for the Southland overall. Sam Houston almost pulled off the upset at New Mexico earlier today. HBU a third quarter lead at UTEP as we speak in El Paso. McDaniel, first down catch. This is Register. Brought down around the 25. Clock will stop as the chains are moved. Well, six foot five running across the middle of the field is a big target to hit inside. Under two minutes remaining. Southern out of timeouts. McDaniel dumps it off. Catch made and out of bounds just shy of the 35-yard line. Travis Tucker, sophomore from Senatobia, Mississippi. Nice job, Register, stepping up in the pocket. He was actually looking down the middle field for Register and came off late to, uh, to Tucker on the side for a first down. Clock had started, and so they'll look to reset this to 133. Glendon McDaniel, sophomore from Dothan, Alabama, came in for Ladaria Skelton in the second quarter. He's been the signal caller ever since for the Jaguars. Blitz. McDaniel up the seam and coming back to make the grab. That's a first down past the McNeese 40, and that is Mackey. 
Well, a nice throw to the back shoulder there by uh, McDaniels to Mackey. Just, he's running up the seam, three receivers to the field. He's the middle receiver up the seam, and he throws it on that back shoulder for a great completion. Still a chance here. Under 80 seconds left. Southern looking for a touchdown and then a recovery, even onside kick. To the sideline, almost intercepted. That's Foster tipping it away. Tyler Brown, Jr. from Donaldsonville, the intended target. Just off the face mask of Foster. Yeah, nice read there by Foster, releasing the guy down the middle, coming off from the uh, slot receiver that turned up the sideline and uh, should have been the sixth turnover for the night. Foster, two fumble recoveries of muffed punts by Southern here tonight. Second and 10, McDaniel. Going deep, this time the coverage is good and <laughs> Register almost came around his defender to make the grab anyway. A 102 left, third and 10 coming. Great coverage inside position by the corner, but he still almost comes over the inside and makes the reception uh, in the end zone register. Colby Richardson was the corner. Javon Burris, the safety helping out. Third and 10. I don't, I don't blame McDaniel. He looks covered, but so what? Give him a shot at it. 6-5. Started his college career in the FBS in Minnesota. Hunter Register. Blitz. Through the hands, incomplete. Dalen Richardson should have had it. Fourth and ten, and Southern obviously will go for it here. Does Glendon McDaniel and the Jaguars have a miracle in them? First down marker at the 25. McDaniel flushed out. Being chased, thrown down, but it's a horse collar. Another McNeese personal foul. And a fresh set of downs coming. Cody Roscoe, the left hand, will be called for the penalty. Wow. Another penalty, 15 yard. Another 15 yarder uh, makes, uh, what, like 16 for the night, I believe? Oh, we're about to 17. check. Seems more than that, even. 16, no, you're right. yeah, 16 tonight for over probably 180 something yards. Now they're officially at 177 yards of penalties. Wow. So still a chance here, although just 48 seconds left. Ball at the 20. McDaniel at the middle. Catch made. Oh, what a lick. Ball loose. Well, I believe the receiver was down. This should be first and goal. He was. First and goal at the know. two. The officials don't know what to call. Well, Brandon Hinton makes the catch here, it looks like. Let's take another look. No doubt. Ball's oh, out. Ball's did. out before he's down. No, you're right. It does come they, out. Look, they don't the even know. Zone. They're letting it go. They're going to blow it. They'll review this. And from the looks of it, this should be McNeese football and a touchback. You know, unless, unless when he got hit from the side that he was... Uh, you know, the back of him was down before the ball comes out, but uh, there's only, you know, you're going to get one view of it, and whether it's a good one or not, we'll see. We'll take a good look here, and this should be a good view. Makes the catch there, gets a hit, and then there. Now the ball's coming out. Ball's coming out, I think, before his back end is down on the uh, on the play, so the ball should be out, should be uh, Magnesis' ball. Cordell Williams was there to recover it. See what this angle shows us. That one's a little different. That yeah. angle's a little bit different. Now, was his knee down before that ball came loose? As Dawson Odoms looks on. Offense is coming back onto the field, so they're going to rule. 
It might be harder to see here, but that Hinton had a knee down. Well, that's bang, bang, but offense is out into the field for Southern. It's going to be first and goal. Might be one of those that's too uh, too close to change whatever the call on the field was. Shane Mosier, our replay official. Southern offense now going back to the sideline as Will the McNeese defense as this replay or review continues to go on. Here's a new angle. Ball's out. That's out. Yeah, the ball's out. From that so, angle, from that angle right there, that ball is out. Two angles says it's out. One angle, we're not sure. <laughs> 29 seconds left, a 34-21 McNeese lead. Yeah, that ball was and, out from that angle and recovered in the end zone there by uh, Cordell Williams. That's the best McNeese. angle. Yeah, sorry, Stan. That's the best angle we've had. I May mean, not see the Southern offense after all. Still waiting. I forget, was there replay when you played the NFL? Had it come into the league yet? No. Not yet? Not yet. So you never had to go through this? Well, obviously they want to get the call right. Sterling Gilbert getting an explanation. And we're still waiting for our referee, Christian Watson, to tell us the call. Well, both teams think it's going to be Southern ball. Southern offense and McNeese defense are still on the field. Christian Watson will take the long run back to the other side of the field. And first, talk to Sterling Gilbert about this. Now, Sterling Gilbert didn't go to his uh, he must, offense to come out onto the field, so it looks like it may be say he was ball. down, yeah. And because he was down, see the clock has now been reset to 38 seconds. So it is Southern ball. They'll... Keep the football on the Jaguars' end, and a first and goal coming here. McDaniel, touchdown. All of a sudden, a one-score game here on Lake Charles. PAT to come, and then the obvious onside kick. What a job, Glendon McDaniel getting his team right back into this game. Yeah, he's done a great job of coming in and making the plays in the passing game, along with McNeese giving him a lot of 15-yard penalties to move the ball. <laughs> but uh, he's done a great job in the throwing game to bring him back. The extra point here, bring him within six. Martel Fontenot kicks it through. And now the all-important onside kick coming. Yeah, it's a big, big onside kick because to me... <laughs> To me, as a player or as a former coach, they get this onside kick. They got they have a guy that's six foot five that you can just throw it up in the air and he can come down with it. McNeese recover the last onside kick Southern attempted. About to get a second try as we see the McDaniel touchdown run. Thirty-two seconds to go. And the hands unit comes out into the field for the Cowboys. Can Southern somehow pull off this comeback? Cesar Baraja, while well, the ball teed up at the 35. And the Jaguars will look to get a chance to pull off what would be a miracle here in Lake Charles. That is not going to work. That's ball game there. He's trying to kick the top of that ball to make it go down into the ground and pop straight up, boy, and he just hits a line drive. Not his best effort, but getting encouragement from his teammates as he goes back to the sideline. 
heck of an effort by the Southern team to even have a shot. They will be a force to be reckoned with in the SWAC. Looking for their first SWAC title in 2013 and perhaps with the team to accomplish that feat. But for Sterling Gilbert, Southern out of timeouts. Magnees just has to take a knee. And the 41-year-old is going to be 1-0 in his head coaching career here in Lake Charles. And that'll do it. And it's Orgeron actually coming out to take the snap. Fun one here tonight, Stan. McNeese with a victory, 34-28. Yeah, it was. It was a nice uh, nice win, open the season for McNeese. Uh, Got to cut back on the penalties for next week, but uh, Coach Gilbert's going to feel good tonight about this one. Well, 177 penalty yards for Sterling Gilbert's squad, but they forced five Southern turnovers. And the victory for the Cowboys, 34-28. As McNeese starts the season at 1-0. Cody Orgeron, the starter for 2019, will celebrate, as well as his teammates, a six-point win.